Uh, with that said, I'll start off. Um, um, my name is Town Manager James Ayers. For the purpose of the folks on the call, um, we're going to go ahead and do a roll call of the participants to establish the quorum. We'll start out. Uh, we'll start out with Mayor Owens, Mr. Mayor. All right, I'm I'm here and I'm at home. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, next next up, we have Mayor Pro Tem Betty Selby. I'm here. Thank you very I'm much. Uh, next up, we have uh, Commissioner Christine Walker. Here. Good evening. We also, we're also on the roll call, Commissioner Borland. Here. Next up on the roll call, Commissioner Mann. Here. Next up on the roll call, Commissioner Burke. Here. And last on the roll call, Commissioner Collins. Yeah. Okay, we've got a quorum and we're ready to go. We'll take a moment of silent meditation so everybody just do what they want to. Anyhow, we'll take a moment. All right, uh, this is a little bit awkward. We'll have the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, so let's get started. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands under God, nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I was breaking up, I think. Anyhow, we got through it. Uh, I think now we need a motion to approve the uh, adoption of the agenda as presented. Can we have a motion? I moved. All right, who is it? Motion who, who? Commissioner Walker. Okay, motion by who? Commissioner Walker, Mr. Mayor. Okay, and was there a second? Second. All right, second, second to the I'm motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, it seems to be up the eyes have it. We approve the consent agenda as presented, uh, A and B, and we'll, we'll just move on. All right, uh, James, go ahead. Thank you, you, Mr. Present? Mayor. If you don't, uh, if it's all right with you, Mr. Mayor, we'll um, um, we appreciate the vote on the on the adoption of the agenda. And we did receive some new guidance from the the state legislature has put some new rules in effect as of Monday. <laughs> their new law, and okay. It, it does it unfor it will require us to do a roll call for every vote, even a one like that. If it, if you don't mind, Mr. Mayor, I'll go ahead and do a roll call. Go of ahead, because I don't vote anyhow. Go ahead, James. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, we'll, we'll go around. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby for the adoption of the agenda. Aye or nay? Aye. Uh, to um, Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Walker, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, aye or nay? Aye. Uh. All right. All right. And Mr. Mayor, next up on the agenda for action would be the consent agenda. Oh, okay. Well, this is Darrell. I'll make a motion to approve yeah. the uh, consent agenda. Yeah. Is there a second? I know there is. All yes. right. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. This All in favor, say aye. Oh, well, go ahead and do your thing, James. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So we had a motion by Commissioner Collins and a second by Commissioner Walker. So if it's all right with you, Mr. Mayor, I'll go ahead and we'll do the roll call again in accordance with the new state law. Go ahead. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Walker, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, aye or nay? Uh, All right, Mr. Mayor, looks like we have un a unanimous right. action on the consent agenda. All right, we have a motion on the uh, consent agenda. It seems to be approved. We'll move on. Yes, sir. Um, item number five on the agenda. This is presentations. All of these are for information. Um, in this particular case, we'll start out. Uh, we'll start out with five A. We won't read the entire proclamation, but it's important for us to recognize May third through 9th, twenty twenty, is Municipal Clerks Week. Uh, this I uh, the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government exists throughout the world. And Municipal Clerk provides the professional link between citizens, local governing bodies, and agencies of government all at the levels. Now, for folks who are interested in seeing the full text of this, it's, it's in their agenda package. So we want to rec recognize uh, Municipal Clerk's Weekend. As, as proclamations are done, they're signed by the mayor on behalf of, of the board of commissioners. Item number 5B is another proclamation. 
This one is National Public Works Week Proclamation, May 17th through 23rd, 2020. I'll just read the, the preamble to this. Uh, public works professionals focus on infrastructure, facilities, and services that are of vital importance to sustainable and resilient communities and to the public health, high quality of life, and well-being of the people of the town of Manio. For the full text of this proclamation, that's also shown in the agenda package for members of the public who are interested in reading about the National Public Works Week proclamation. Item number 5C, this is an update on the town website schedule. For this update, our um, IT department head, Carl Woody, will be sharing information with the Board of Commissioners. Hi, Adon. Hello. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. who is this? Hi, my name's Carl Woody, I'm with the technology. Oh, Carl, I, I, yeah, I know I didn't catch your voice, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, before I get started, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the team that we've assembled. It's a cross-functional team that consists of four members, James Ayers, um, Melissa Dickerson, Michelle Bunce, and myself. Um, and we are, all four of us are working with a contractor with our ideas and our um, design elements and so forth with the contractor to make sure they are done. Um, we're also working with all departments uh, to get current content and so forth. So when the, we deploy the new uh, website, it will be, um, we'll have current content. content. Um, timeline, I just want to go over a quick timeline here. Uh, the, final the final design approval happened April 23rd for the home page and the internal pages. And that's just the design standpoint. Um, from April 24th to May 29th, the contractor will be working on deploying those format changes in what they call the staging site. Um, during that time, we'll also be working with all departments to ensure that we have all the correct content, updated content, pictures, videos, or whatever it may be. Now, training will occur the first week of June. Um, the training will be for those that um, are editing pages and for the admins um, that will be doing the back end management and so forth of the new website. Uh, during June, June into July, we'll be finalizing our content. Um, there's just a lot of content that needs to be updated, videos, um, forms, uh, there's a lot of outdated forms. So we wanna update all that information so when we go live, everything is current and up to date. And our deployment is set for July 31st. So with that said, I'm gonna switch to the monitor here and show you what we have right now. All right, so this, this is what they call the staging site. There's some changes that need to happen on this site, but you can see there's a large image that three images will switch between. Um, there's still some changes that they have to do on this. And then we have what's called a spotlight. Um, if there's a video here, they can click in it and it'll enlarge, it'll enlarge very nice and so forth. And then we've got our basic um, calendar, news, and some um, open data information on the bottom. So the other part that I wanted to show, if I go, it's very small from all the way out here, so I think I can get to it. The, um, this is the... Um, the content for, um, or, or the inside pages is what they'll look like. So um, you, you, they're formatted pretty nice videos. You have contact information, you can have resource boxes, you can have a lot of things on this side. So we have to go through every page to make sure that we have the current information in there and whatever is relevant. If there's a lot of resources, resources on the side. Um, we're looking at putting frequently asked questions in there. So just to help the end user navigate and find what they want. Um, uh, and this is, it looks like they ch made a change in the last hour. <laughs> this did not look like this earlier. So they're, they're supposed to move these changes over. So, but that's where we're at right now. Um, just some of the content's been moved over there, but we just need to go through it, scrub it, make sure everything looks good, correct, updated. Um, I don't know. Great. I mean, the photography. 
Yeah, it's uh, we um, contracted with a local vendor to go around and make or take current pictures, um, and he's done an absolute wonderful job on grabbing that information. But a lot of those pictures aren't even in this website yet, so we still have to go and update all these. Images. The icon there at the top right. Is that, uh, this is what's called um, your accessibility. Oh, okay. Um, I can I can see what it is. So this is that. for those that um, let's say let's see, need like here. a bigger screen. Or... Yeah. So there's a loading screen reader enabled screen page normal one of three. So User if I way accessibility menu closed. So if I click. Marina, so these are just some of the accessibility options that we'll have for those that may not know how to read. It'll read to them. And there's a lot of different. Um, uh, turn off. I can't see from here. There you go. There we go. Oh my God, <laughs> I can't see it from here, so I can, it's pretty far away from me. But th these are some of the things that newer websites have that you just, it, it helps supply whoever's attending or whoever's reading our website. It'll help them to be able to read it. it you can change the contrast for those that may be vision impaired to help them be able to see it and so forth. So it's, it's, a, it's a very nice function to have. Is that going to be labeled in, in any way in case someone doesn't know what it is, like, like we did? Uh, it's, it's a click on it. Uh, oh, I didn't know. Like, we'll go here for... I mean, we'll, we'll probably provide some guidance when we deploy this out. Um, of, okay. You know, what are all the different functions and so forth with our website? But um, right now, if they hover over it, it just says access, I think accessibility. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and if I and if I may, uh, this is town manager Ayers, uh, but Commissioner Burke. Uh, one of the reasons that this particular feature is added to the site is to give us full ADA uh, accessibility and compliance with the new laws, and that's the universal symbol that that's being required by the ADA to designate those functions, either for the visually impaired or um, other folks who may need some additional assistance, either with the the text to voice or the uh, the increased brightness or whatever features. So we're real excited to make sure that we're now going to be in 100 percent compliance. Yeah. Nice. That's all I have for right now. Looks great. All right. Thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Woody. Um, next up on the agenda, 5D. Also under presentations. This is for, this is for information. Uh, with a request for an update on the town common schedule. Um, we'll go back to the Dare County Tourism Board grant, where the town of Mania received a two hundred twenty-one thousand dollar grant against a seven hundred sixty-three thousand dollars in con projected construction costs. As noted when the project and grant had been discussed here, uh, the Deer County Tourism Board grant requires us to finish by June 2021. But our goal all along it has been indicated, we, have, we want to beat that deadline and get the town common done before next tourist season. So the Deer County Tourism Board final documents and grant agreement were, uh, were received and signed in March of 2020. We solicited the engineering services required to take this project to the next phase in April 2020. If the contract is approved later tonight on the agenda, engineering will start in May 2020. Uh, the highest rated engineering firm, interestingly enough, submitted a draft schedule for this. And the proposed, proposed schedule from this point on would be engineering design done by June, bidding and related documents by July, contractor bidding and board approval, which will be required per state law, would be done in August. The contractor would mobilize after Labor Day. Uh, primary infrastructure, utilities, parking lot, and related uh, related infrastructure would be done by December. And there may be some residual landscaping in early 2021 in that part of the planning season. But the goal here is to make sure we are we are done well before the next tourist season and actually have some time for grow in and making sure uh, everything from uh, lighting to uh, facilities have been tweaked. So that's the latest update with key milestones on that project. I know this topic will come up later in the agenda as we look toward potential approval of the engineering contract so we can enter the next phase. Um, 
questions from members of the board before we move on to the next agenda item? Yes, it's Commissioner Burke. That's an aggressive schedule they put together. Um, uh, yes, uh, th thank you, Commissioner Burke. The, um, okay. what, or the, or the original schedule that uh, the Tourism Board had allowed us to go out to June 2021, we actually believe that we can, we can, we can um, accelerate schedule. We've got a, a, the, I was, first of all, I was very pleased that the engineering firm that was the highest rated um, was the only one to submit a proposed schedule and they had a good aggressive schedule and have, have dedicated resources to this. So that looked like it could cut off uh, at least 30 to 60 the overall schedule. Uh, also, we're trying to be careful on the construction phase because we don't want to, uh, we need to have a construction lay down area for the contractor. So we wanted to focus on infrastructure, utilities, uh, and um, the parking lot itself first. And then as they move off that, make sure we can go after the park areas, the turf grass, landscaping, and areas like that. So by resequencing this and having a more aggressive schedule on some of these, um, the consulting activities, it looks like we're able to uh, beat the original schedule by several months. Good. And if there's no other questions, then we'll go ahead and move on on the, on the agenda. The engineering firm that was the highest rated? Yes, yes, Mayor Pro Tem, Selby. Um, who drew the plans? Did they already draw draw the plans, or do I need to ask, ask that later on in the meeting? Oh no, this is a, 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 a no mayor pro tem. It's a, absolutely appropriate. Um, so the the original conceptual design was done under a contract with, between the town of Manio and a local landscape architect, um, and that uh, lo landscape architect was was John Robbins. Subsequent to that time, there was there was the discussion that that plan needed to be tweaked. Um, and the, that tweaking was, was done after a significant board meetings and community input uh, in which the parking and the park area, interestingly enough, the plan design actually gave a little more park area and a little more parking, so it was kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, and the firm that performed that work was Green Engineering that did the, the tweaked design. But it's only a conceptual plan. We expect a new engineer to take that conceptual plan and the survey that was done and come up with their own design. So, so it's not what we saw. Is not in stone. It um, it's 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 pretty it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Um, we we wanted to make sure they had the conceptual plan as one of their design considerations because we first of all didn't want them to start from scratch, but also we didn't want to get away from what the community vision was for this to have both park and parking area, and we'll make sure that they get the requisite number of parking spaces and green yes. space and facilities. We're, we're real excited about it. Thank you. All right, um, and looking around, it looks like there are no more questions on that agenda item. So we'll move, we'll move on to item, this, I, if it's all right with you, Mr. Mayor, may we move yeah, on? Yeah, do we, do we have to have, go to, uh, what do we do, just declare a public hearing? Um, yes, Mr. Mayor, what, um, absolutely. The, 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 public, the public hearing item six is the Town of Manual Flood Damage Prevention Ordinance. It's for information. Um, and if it's for information, we don't need a motion, do we? We do need a motion to enter okay. into the uh, enter into the public hearing and later to close the okay. public hearing. All right. Can we have a motion to enter into the public hearing in regards to flood damage prevention ordinance and the flood maps? Somebody make a motion. This is Commissioner Walker. I move to um, open a public hearing on the flood damage prevention ordinance. Second. And the second came from Commissioner Borland, Mr. Mayor. All right, motion, motion second. We enter into a public hearing with about in regards to town flood damage prevention ordinance. All approved. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the for the cue there. We'll we'll do the oh, roll, there you go. We'll, go we'll ahead. The, the roll call vote to to on the motion to uh, enter into the um, yeah. hearing. So we'll start with Mayor Pro Tem Selby, I or nay. Aye. We'll go to Commissioner Burke, I or nay. Aye. Commissioner Mann, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Walker, aye or nay? Aye. And Commissioner Collins, aye or nay? Aye. All right. Uh, th All uh, right. Thank you. Thank you, I have it. Let's go. All right. So what we're going to do, we've got two parts. So in terms of the public comment, first, the first public comment that will come in was actually submitted by, uh, submitted in writing by the, uh, uh, by a, um, a, lo a local organization, and that will be read off by the by the town planner into the record. Now, for the for the uh, audience at home, we we found that in the, the the legislature passed a law on Monday, and it requires us to take these public hearings, but we need to add, make sure we accept written comments 
not just tonight or, or between the notice period and tonight, but also within 24 hours of this hearing. Um, and so um, the, this, this new law causes us that. The first, first written comment, Melissa Dickerson, our town planner, will read that comment, that, that public comment for us. So Melissa, would you like to go first? Yes, Mr. Ayers, thank you very much. Um, so the, the written comment that we um, is, is from the Outer Banks Headquarters Association, um, and I'll go ahead um, and, and read the brief letter. Um, Dear Mayor Owens and Manio Commissioners, thank you for your leadership as our community works to maximize its resilience by revising the Flood Damage Prevention Ordinance in preparation for the 2020 insur flood insurance rate maps or firms June 19th effective date. The over 500 members of the Outer Banks Home Builders Association appreciate the complexity of the task before you and welcome the opportunity this process presents to us to apply our professional knowledge in service to the town. We are thankful for town planner Melissa Dickerson and planning staff responsiveness to our members' recommendations as the ordinance has developed in recent months and are confident that the draft before you offers sound solutions to the challenges the 2020 firm poses for construction and development standards. The association members began working in early 2017 with the surveying and engineering community to assist local planning staff in designing new flood prevention measures to address an anticipated reduction in the 2006 firm's flood zone elevations in Dare County. Extensive consideration of historical flooding, previous firms, and topographical data informed a consensus among county and municipal planning staff that administration of eight foot standards to a revised reference level, the bottom of the lowest floor or utility, would ensure adequate flood protection in X and shaded X zones. Because our members operate in seven county and municipal jurisdictions with varying regulatory requirements, the association's paramount interest throughout our community-wide flood map discussions has been promoting common sense consistency in the development of the new local elevation standards. The association appreciates the draft <clears throat> flood damage prevention ordinance inclusion of a local elevation standards appropriately consistent with with this paradigm. In addition, our association has offered extensive technical support to assist planning staff in crafting ordinance language that tailors town <clears throat> regulatory goals to a current construction practice. We appreciate staff's consistent availability for productive discussions to achieve an ordinance that works on paper and in practice for home builders, homeowners, and town permitting and inspection personnel. Manio's ordinance clearly reflects planning staff's belief in a cooperative approach to community resilience that incorporates community stakeholders' interests and expertise as fully as possible. We hope the association's intensive participation in the ordinance process communicates our seriousness about meeting the complex environmental and regulatory challenges involved in residential construction on our barrier islands. Thank you again for participating in the Outer Banks cooperative endeavor to address present and future flood risk, an effort we feel serves the coastal communities as a model for stakeholder inclusive regulation, regulation to promote sustainable building. Regards, Vaughn Robinson, Jay Overton, and Porter Graham. Thank you, Tom Planner Dickerson. And that is the only written comment we received, uh, received on this um, particular item. Now it's an opportunity for the members of the public to have their voice heard. Uh, for members of the public who are listening in, right now we're showing nine attendees from the public. And if you desire to be heard at this public hearing, note this is not the public comment section, which is next. this is the public hearing on the flood damage prevention ordinance and flood maps, please hit star nine on your phone and it will raise your hand virtually so that we can see that you would like to speak. Okay, so uh, Mr. Mayor, we've got the first hand raised, so we'll go ahead and coordinate with this person, if it's all right. Okay, we get their name and address. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, for the callers, we've got a couple callers who've raised their hand. We'll, we'll ask for your name and address as you and, and proceed with your speaking. So the first, we'll identify you not by your whole number for privacy, but we'll identify you by the last four digits of your, of your phone number. The first hand that's raised at the top in orange is 3022. And 3022, our, our facilitator has unmuted you. So if you'd like to identify yourself, your location, and your comment, you're most welcome to proceed. Caller, caller with the last four digits of 3022, you're welcome to proceed. Uh, uh, caller 3022, it may be possible that you need to unmute your phone on your end. I know with my, iPhone, my phone that I need to do that as well. So on this end, you're unmuted. You may want to double check on your end if you can uh, uh, unmute your phone. We're ready to hear from you. Okay, uh, caller 3022, we may have to come back to you. It looks like there may be a, a, a we, can't, we can't hear you right now, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and have our facilitator mute you for a second. We'll go to the next caller. This caller is identified by the last four digits of 2114. So caller 2114, um, if you could identify yourself and your location, our facilitator has just unmuted your phone. You're welcome to proceed. Uh, good evening. This is Jay Overton with Albemarle and Associates, and I was speaking to you tonight uh, as a representative of the Outer Banks Home Builders Association. I'm the legislative chairman, and I just wanted to add a couple more comments to our, our written statement that was provided. I wanted to let you know, Mayor Owens and the other commissioners, what a pleasure it's been to, to be involved in this process over the past three years. Uh, Quite often you don't hear this, but uh, we had a unique situation occur throughout our county where all the municipalities came together through their planning directors. We had builders, we had surveyors, we had engineers. They were all focused upon looking at what would be the best thing for our Outer Banks community. And what you're seeing tonight with your flood prevention ordinance um, is the result of that. But the main thing that I wanted to share with you through my work with the North Carolina Home Builders and, and others within our organization, we find ourselves going across the state and we find ourselves interacting with other people across the nation. And it has been very rewarding as we've talked about what we've been going through here with our flood prevention ordinance over the past three years. The reaction that we have received from other community leaders saying that that's someone unheard of, that we as a community, both private and public, could come together and be able to forge a document like this. Not that everybody got exactly what they wanted, but we came up with an ordinance that was proactive for our community. Uh, had some folks in uh, Louisiana who they just couldn't understand how we could facilitate something like this. And it wasn't that home builders, it was Melissa and the other uh, planning directors, and their efforts are a reflection of who y'all are as our community leaders and as our commissioners in Manio. So I just wanted to personally thank you in that regard, and um, have a good evening. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Jay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So we're going to go back to the only other caller who had their hand raised. And that was last four digits of 3022. Caller, we're gonna try one, one more time to see if, uh, see if we can, can hear you on this line. And if you could state your name, identify your location, and please uh, provide your comment. Can you hear me? Yes, caller, yeah. we, we can hear you now. Um, if, if you could identify yourself and your location, well, we welcome your feedback on the public hearing. Sorry, a little technological problem. Okay, my name is Jackie Myers. I live in Marsh's Light at 216 Street. Um, my question is, Marsh's Light homeowners had our annual meeting recently by phone. We were told that Saga has been in discussion with the town about building 16 condominiums on the hotel site. 
Can you share any information about that? Uh, Mr. Mayor, if you'd like, I can take this. Um, yeah, take it, but go ahead and set her straight. Yes. Um, 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 Ms. Myers, uh, right now we're on the public hearing for the flood damage prevention ordinance and flood maps. Um, we'll, we'll oh, I'm sorry. I it, thought we were on public. Okay. No, man, it's, it's absolutely okay. Um, we'll, cons we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and I'm, as I'm looking at the town clerk, we'll go ahead and enter your thing, for the, uh, enter your thing as, a, as a public comment. Um, and certainly we're happy. Okay. To, in general, the public comment is not intended for uh, questions and answers between uh, the public members of the board or staff. Um, but we're happy. We're happy to chat with you. But we're certainly um, we're not we're, we're not in discussions. We're we're waiting to receive app. We're, we're we expect to receive applicate applications from an applicant. But right now we do not have an applicant in hand application in hand. So um, hopefully though uh, there'll be some future future conversations with the uh, community and who and whoever else every other stakeholder on if that issue should arise and an application should be submitted. But thank you for submitting. Okay. Your so comment. For we're not on public comment. I'm sorry. I apologize. I was um, listening, but it's okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for your comment. Okay. Um, okay. We'll go ahead. Um, we'll go ahead and with members of the members of the public for the public hearing for the flood damage prevention ordinance. If anybody else would like to raise their hand, um, it looks like we've got nobody raising. Um, nope. Nobody else. Nobody else on the board. Uh, board, Mr. Mayor. So it, it looks like All it right, may be. Well, to close the public all right. hearing. All right, we'll close the public hearing. I move to have a close public yeah, hearing on the flood damage prevention ordinance and flood maps. And right, the motion is second. Second. I'll second. Uh, all right, the motion is second. There's a motion right. second. We close the uh, public hearing for the time any flood damage prevention ordinance. Uh, all, yes, all sir, in favor. I'll do the Go ahead. If it's all right, Mr. Mayor, I'll go ahead and do the roll call. Like, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Self, I or nay? Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Burke, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, uh, Commissioner Borland, I or nay? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Walker, I or nay? Aye. And Commissioner Collins, I or nay? Aye. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Looks like you have a unanimous vote to okay. vote to exit the public hearing. All right. We'll. Declare the public hearing uh, closed, and uh, we uh, all in favor closed. We just voted, didn't we? Okay, let's move yes, on. Then. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number seven: public comment. This is for information uh, for our folks listening at home. Uh, they are going to be they'll, they'll be invited to provide their public comment, and I'll go ahead and read the our traditional um, uh, uh, direction here. Members of the public are invited to address the board of commissioners on any topic. Public comment is not intended to require the board to answer any impromptu questions or to take any action on items brought up during the public comment period. Speakers will address all the comments to the board as a whole and not one individual commissioner. Discussions between speakers and members of the audience will not be allowed. Time limits are three minutes per person or five minutes per group. Please identify yourself and your location so that your statements can be recorded. For those people, uh, those attendees, um, Please hit star nine to raise your hand and we'll go ahead and see if anybody would like to submit for public comment. James, may I cut in here just one minute? Uh, you're going to have to keep time or Becky won. Yes, sir. The town clerk is, is ready. The timer is up and I think we've got a hand raised, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Okay. So caller identified by the last four digits of 3022. Our uh, facilitator will unmute you. And please identify yourself and your location, please. Thank you. It's Jackie Myers again at 216 Compton Street in Marsha's Light. Okay, I understand what you said about um, that we're not asking questions to be answered. Um, but um, many of us, um, since we were told by the developer that there had been discussions with the town of Manio about building 16 condominium buildings, 16 condominiums, excuse me, instead of the hotel site, um, we have grave concerns. And I guess we just would all like to know how we find out more about that. Scott? James, are you there? 
I mean, yes, Mr. I'm, I'm trying to, to figure out in terms of our protocol, uh, we, we, we certainly have a community engagement process and, and any, at the time we receive an application, we absolutely will engage the community very quickly, just like we did last time. Can you re reiterate the process for, you know, that would in involve a change for CUP and, um, you know, public hearing and all that? Thank you, Commissioner Borland. Mr. Mayor, it's all right. Commissioner Borland has is, 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 is guided me to um, go ahead and update the process. So um, the, the, de the developer in this or any other case in a development that's under a conditional use this is, permit. This is, not, this is not protocol, but we'll go ahead and do it because the commissioner comments. Oh, oh yes. We usually, thank, don't thank comment. we usually don't comment during public hearing, but yes, go thank ahead. You. He, thank he's a commissioner. Well, he's got a right to ask a question. Thank you. And, and Commissioner Moore, I appreciate the opportunity to reiterate the process. Should the, should the uh, developer in this case or any other case submit an application to the town, we will very quickly uh, make sure to not just um, notify the appropriate uh, governmental authorities, but also we've engaged the public as we demonstrated last time. Uh, something like this would re require approval, uh, would require referral to appropriate boards and commissions, and that also would require us to do public notice of anything like that. So we absolutely are committed to transparency in these things should an application be submitted. Thank you, Commissioner Borland. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for dispensation on that. And uh, the caller's concern is noted for the record as a public comment. Uh, do we have uh, anybody else for public comment here? Uh, uh, please raise your hand by doing star nine on your phone, please. All right, Mr. Mayor, we're not seeing any other hands raised on this on this public com on this public comment uh, public comment period here. All right, let me ask one more time: Was anybody like to be heard at public comment time? All right, here and now we'll close the public comment period. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'll move on Go to ahead. the next. We'll move on to the next agenda item. Um, this is section eight, and we've got a number of items of new business. All of these items are for action. Item number 8A is property disposal, 604 Sir Walter Raleigh. Uh, this property was acquired by, uh, acquired by the town recently, but it's not part of any town program or strategic plan or initiative. Uh, the property is surplus to the town's to the needs of the town of Manio as a result. The town does anticipate budget reductions for fiscal year 2021 based on the uh, guidance from uh, state and county sources, which would guide us to dispose of surplus assets to try and make up the difference. Um, we, uh, we, had in, in, we had investigated the state statute for disposal of, such real, of real property and uh, recommending the use of sealed bids for this uh, as well as a re as a reserve of fifty thousand, which was set, which is the last arm's length transaction here. So we're recommending uh, au uh, authorization to dispose of this property by um, by pub by public by sealed bid uh, in accordance with state law. All right, you've heard from the uh, town manager. Can we have some discussion on it? Yeah, I mean, we we at least ought to get fifty thousand. This is Daryl. We ought at least start the the bidding at fifty thousand dollars for that block because that's what we paid for. Okay. Any other comments? This is this is Christine. Um, we so we will accept bids and uh, accept the highest. I'm assuming. Yeah, yes, Commissioner and, Walker, that, that's correct. And we, the, the way we, we'd use the sealed bids, uh, the reason I had recommended a reserve price of what the prior sale was from, um, from the prior seller to, uh, to Ms. Zoila Torres from whom we bought the lot, I want to set that floor because we, just in case coronavirus impacts sealed bids in a way that people want to put a low wall bid there, we want to establish at least a minimum price so that we don't get stuck with a low wall bid. But, um, but we'll, again, we'll make sure we do it in accordance with state law. We have been, um, but I've already researched those statutes. Dale, does that satisfy you? Or you want to put it in form of motion or? Uh, let me just, uh, 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 James, can we, can we start the bid at $50,000? I don't know why not, but that's, yeah. what do you think, manager? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, my recommendation was to have that reserve price of $50,000. 
uh, we did verify in the statute that this board can put uh, conditions like that on on such a on such a sale, and that also telegraphs the public that we're serious about this. So I'm I'm comfortable recommending that fifty thousand reserve. Dale, is that satisfy? Yeah, that's good. Do we need enough? Uh, we don't need a motion on that, do we, James? Yes, sir. Um, this, in order to to authorize me to start this right. to do this, process, right. this motion. Can, we, can we have a motion that we start the proposal out for uh, 604 Swarter Valley at sixty thousand dollars? I move to as to, uh, as to Daryl's motion. I move to authorize town manager to dispose property at 604 Sir Walter Raleigh and execute all necessary documents related to the sale and closing of the subject property. For the record, that was Commissioner Borland uh, making that motion. Okay. Yeah. Have we got a motion to cycle? You got to, you got to go through your procedure, ain't you, James? Yes, sir. There's no after we, after we, after we, all right. All right. No further discussion. No. All right, everybody in favor of the motion, say aye. Oh, yeah, go I, ahead, James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If we may, I, I was looking over, um, uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Burke made the uh, second on, on the motion. Uh, and if it's all right with you, now we're okay to do the roll call vote. Would you like me to proceed with that, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, aye or nay? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, aye or nay? Aye. <clears throat> Commissioner Borland, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Walker, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, I or nay? Aye. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it looks like there's a unanimous vote on that motion. All right, we have a unanimous uh, vote, so the motion carries. Yes, sir. Next up on the agenda, item 8B. This is a proposed uh, uh, amendment to the Code of Ordinances. This is section 50-144 regarding the adjustment of bills. It's my understanding that uh, it, is, it is customary um, in terms of a, a utility billing, if there is a notification of a customer uh, filling a swimming pool or doing a large pressure washing uh, work on their property, that they can, that, that material, that water does not end up in the wastewater, the wastewater treatment plant. So there, is, there has been, it would be the opportunity for that customer to request in writing that the sewer portion of the bill uh, be waived because it's not being treated in the sewer system. However, in order for that to happen, our ordinance would need to read that. So I want to make sure that it's actually in writing and the board has the opportunity to, con to consider that. Uh, just also for the record, this adjustment would only be done applied one time per calendar year. Would they All right. Heard? That's what they plan to do, say in the instance of a swimming pool. Yes, and uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, the Commissioner Walker brought up the issue about notification, and it's important for the um, for the party to notify us, and they're actually expected to provide documentation, whether it's a um, if it's a pressure washing like an invoice or if it's an affidavit that it was filling in the swimming pool, et cetera. We'll need written documentation. I think that's appropriate, not just from a fiscal standpoint, but also to make sure this can't be some oral thing. So we'd require that written documentation as requested. All right, a motion's in order, James? Yes, sir. Is there any comments, any, any further comments anybody want to say? All right, uh, all in favor of the code of ordinance change, uh, record it with James. Mr. What, Richie, what I have the motion on the proposed change to ordinance. Oh, oh I'm, I'm Mr. Mayor, uh, Commissioner Burke is making the motion to for the proposed okay. amendment to ordinance 50-144. Yes, we want to make sure I could hear that. And well, I, I'm having trouble hearing. Is there a second to it? Yes, sir. Commissioner Mann has made a second okay. motion, so it's well, ready for the roll call vote. If it's all right, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Walker, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, aye or nay? Aye. Mr. Mayor, looks all like right. it's in this vote, sir. All right, seems like uh, there's no lies, so I guess the motion carries. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, next up on the agenda, item 8C. It's a zoning code of ordinances amendment this time, and this is under section 12-7, vote list. Uh, at the April 5th, at the last board of commissioners meeting, a board member suggested the potential deletion of a section of the zoning ordinance. 
Um, and to, to lift that prohibition against, um, against boat lifts and marinas, the following text amendment would be required. Simply delete the words, boat lifts or any devices attached to pilings or docks and designed to suspend a boat over the water are not permitted in marinas. And that would, that, that, in order for that to be considered, this board would have to, re, would be expected according to pro, a procedure to refer it to the planning and zoning board for their recommendation. And then also the, that this board of commissioners would schedule a public hearing, uh, presumably at its, at its uh, June 17th meeting to give enough time for the planning and zoning board to come back. All right, is a motion needed on that if it's got to go through all that procedure? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, there would be a motion. Okay. The motion be required both to uh, refer it to the Planning and Zoning Board and to schedule okay. a public hearing for June 17th. Uh, I just, just ask, uh, can we have a motion on the zoning code change for a 12-7 boat list? Does this just um, open the door to have further conversation or is this flat out deletion of that? I, I don't, I mean. I gather it's just opening the door, but I don't know, Jason. Right downtown in, in the, you know, I guess the historic waterfront piece. I don't see boat lifts there, but essentially Marsh's Light and beyond, um, you know, I think that's what we're trying to do here. Is it up to zoning and planning to figure out the details there and we're just opening the door today or are we, do we need to provide that detail? Yes, and Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer the questions from Commissioner Borley and Commissioner Walker. Go ahead. The first step, this is indeed just the first step of the process. So this is, because it was brought up by a board member, it would need to go through the process first with the Planning and Zoning Board who would, you know, it would address, address it, see if it's uh, consistent with our, our plans and make a recommendation to this board. And then there'd be a public hearing and the board would consider it. Um, interestingly enough though, this particular thing is only about marinas, so it, it doesn't affect the private property owners with their own dock and need for boat lift. Um, and when it comes to marinas, there's a couple different categories. The town's public marina, we of course have the right to not put up a boat lift even if this prohibition is lifted. But in addition, there are private properties like, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, whether it be uh, uh, Marsh's Light or a place like that, Marsh's Light, for example, we have a copy of their conditions, covenants, and restrictions, also known as CCNRs, where they actually prohibit boat lifts. So if a resident came to us saying they wanted a boat lift at their dock in that particular development, they would still have to go through their own homeowners association, even if we lifted this, uh, lifted this prohibition. So uh, there may be multiple layers for folks in those marinas to go through with their own homeowners associations. But we on the dock said there's no chance of the docks downtown and the boat lift on. Right. Yes, Mr. Mayor, it was uh, Commissioner's Burke question about downtown. The town, uh, other than the one dock uh, that doesn't belong to the town, all the other town docks in the marina, this, this board would have control over that and, and could, if should choose, is never installed boat lifts in there uh, as part of that. Uh, Thank you. All right, anyone else? Did, did, who made the motion? I'll make a motion. This is uh, Commissioner Borland. I move to refer the proposed amendment to section 12.7 of the zoning code ordinances to the planning and zoning board for their recommendation right. and that the board of commissioners should schedule a public hearing for June 17th. All right, is there a second? A second. Yep, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Potem Selby has uh, done the second to Commissioner Borland's motion. Okay. And I may do the roll call, Mr. Second, Mr. Mayor. We, uh, yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Uh -huh. Mayor. Uh, first on the roll call, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Walker, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, I or nay? Aye. Okay, right. it seems like your vote is unanimous. Yeah, sounds like the motion carries. Uh, we voted, so move on, I guess. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Next up on the agenda, item 8D. This is the fee schedule. Uh, the fee schedule accom accompanies the, uh, the, the budget each fiscal year. And the board and in the agenda package, both in front of the board as well as in the publicly available agenda package, is this multi-page fee schedule. Uh, it's, been, it's been reorganized to be clearer to read, but here are the important things, uh, especially to your constituents. Number one and number one, uh, no fees are going up. So on this schedule, there's no proposal to go up water, sewer, or any other. Uh, number, number two, we eliminated the meter tampering fee 
And we eliminated this meter tampering fee because state law has been revised and does not allow the town to levy that fee. It allows the town to take other actions against those who tamper with their meter, but not to levy a fee. So that's been eliminated from this. And number three, uh, this also this also clarifies the commercial boat slip rate in the downtown marina at 660 a month. That had been the customary practice down there, but it, it needs to be actually written down for that to be uh, to, to be to be levied. So, um, but as I said, no fees are going up. Uh, we've eliminated unnecessary fees, and the staff recommends approval, and it would be incorporated by reference in the budget. This is Richard. All right, any discussion? What was that statement you made about no tampering fees? Who uh, I didn't. Thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Commissioner Burke has addressed a question about the meter tampering fees. So in our old yeah. fee schedule, there was a fifty dollar uh, fifty dollar meter tampering fee, which could be levied. However, state law has changed. That means we can't levy that tampering fee anymore. The state law does give us the right to basically civilly go after someone who tampers, but it just doesn't give us the right to just uh, blanket levy that fee. So. Um, that that was a that was a change in state law a little while back. We just want to clean up. I well, was aware of that situation. Thank you, sir. All right. Any other discussion? Just to clarify, this is Eddie Mann. Uh, just to clarify, this is not a changing of any fees. It's just pretty much a clerical uh, house cleaning for paperwork purposes. Yes, right. and Mr. Mayor, I'm, uh, I'll address Commissioner Mann's comments. Yes, this is this is clerical, where it's cleaning up the organization, so it's clear what fee is for what thing. Uh, and we are, and 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 I can confirm that no fees are going up here. Okay. I move All right. To who wants to? There you go. Go. Go ahead. Who was doing it? That was. This is Betty Selby. I move to approve the fee schedule as presented. All right. I'll second. I'll second. Right. This is Christine Walker. Okay. James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'll do the roll call vote. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, yeah. Aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Walker, aye or nay? Aye. And Commissioner Collins, aye or nay? Uh, All right, Mr. All Mayor, right, it looks like you're like there. You yes, sir. All right, thank you. Um, we'll move. We'll move forward with item eight E on the agenda. This is the pay plan. Um, this is this is also something that is is incorporated in the budget, and that's why we go ahead and go through this. We had actually have some good news on this. So we were able to piggyback on the salary study done by Southern Shores, and actually happened to we had, there was an excellent excellent consultant there who I'd met previously, and uh, so we were able to get some some great help there. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it's it was great timing. Uh, what I can tell you, and this is important. There are no changes to the pay grades, the classifications, or the ranges, which is really good. Um, so I'm really pleased to hear that. Uh, the only thing, and point number three, the only thing we've done, we've spotted new or reclassified positions in the appropriate grade after consultation with the consultant. So um, if, for, for example, um, we have um, uh, the, we, have, we have proposed a potential, this is a potential position. Again, it would still be up to the will of the board is for, for a few months to have a deputy town clerk position to overlap with the existing town clerk as part of a transition. Again, that's not been approved position, it's a potential position, it would have to be approved by the board as part of the budget process, but we wanna make sure that our pay plan reflects either reclasses or potential new positions so that we don't have to come vote on, have you all come vote on this again. So, um, but the, 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 I recommend the approval of the, of the pay plan uh, by the board of commissioners. All right, and discussion. So it's not approving any, I mean, we would be, it would come back to us before we would approve any new hires or positions. Yes, Mr. I'll address uh, Commissioner Walker's question. Uh, this, by simply by putting, for example, that position of deputy town clerk, just by putting this pay plan does not say that we're authorized or does not say that, that the board has appropriated those funds. The board would only appropriate those funds at the time of the new budget, which would be presented to you later in the month. So, but it's a, it's a great clarification. And just for my clarification, this is not changing any salaries or positions, it's simply just cleaning up clerical issues for you, correct? Oh, well, there are, there are some reclassified positions based on the, based on the consultant. Let me, oh, it didn't show up in red. Um, 
It's painted pretty black. Uh, and white. James, you might, well, you, they, James, the board might be aware of it. I'm sure they are, but you might explain this a little bit clearer that uh, Becky's planning on retiring and you've got to have a replacement. And you're thinking about having somebody early to learn the ropes and everything. I don't think you've mentioned that. The board might know it, but that's the reason for the position, I think. Am I right, James? Yes, sir. That deputy town clerk is that position. Um, uh, also, and, and that's absolutely right, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in addition, we did have a couple of reclasses. They call them reclass or reclassification. So that's a great point Commissioner Mann brought up. Uh, there were a couple of these positions that, uh, based on the, that salary study, there's a uh, clarification on if we have a fire marshal slash emergency operations manager. That's at a classification 16. Um, the, the also that the recommendation from the consultant was the town planner to pay grade of, of 21. So based on the equivalent to the other positions we have there, the public works director and the water sewer department director. Um, Mr. Man, uh, Commissioner Mann, is that, is, that, is that all right? Yes. Thank you, sir. All right, is there any other uh, questions or any, all, anybody, anybody want to offer anything? All right, uh, can we have a motion on the pay plan? This is narrow. I'm motion to approve the pay plan. Uh, <clears throat> second. I'll second. And Mr. Mayor, Commissioner Mann has seconded it. And if it's all right, yeah. may I do it? I'll go ahead and do the roll call, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, I or nay. Commissioner Burke, I or nay. Aye. Commissioner Mann, I or nay. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Borland, I or nay. Aye. Commissioner Walker, I or nay. Aye. And Commissioner Collins, I or nay. Aye. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it appears that there's a, uni a unanimous a motion. Go ahead, James. Well, thank you. I was just uh, presenting to you a unanimous vote on that item. If you'd like, uh, would, if you'd like, I can move on to item 8E. Yeah, sure. That's, um, yeah, that's what I said. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's item 8F. Um, this is it's, it's titled Grant Agreement for Fourth of July Fireworks. Um, <clears throat> this was originally put on the agenda because the, in order to the board has authorized the town manager to apply for grants. When we have a grant like this, though, the board reserves the right to accept a grant and, and all of its conditions. Um, in this particular case, the, the town was awarded a grant from the Dare County Tourism Board in the amount of $12,831 for the 4th of July special event, specifically earmarked for fireworks. Um, the, now, I will tell you this grant agreement, there's a new condition in it that um, it specifically excludes pandemics or hurricanes as grounds for delaying or failing to deliver fireworks at an event. So <laughs> we don't deliver, we don't get the money. Um, so that's, that was, that's, that's, you needed to know that as a board. Um, there are a few other issues that have come up as well. Uh, in late breaking news, Nags had just announced they have canceled their 2024th of July fireworks and celebration. Um, and as my staff report indicated, we looked at Governor Cooper's latest information that he just put out there in terms of the three-phase uh, program to reopen the economy. Unfortunately, it looks like from the phasing they're presented that we would not be able to put 5,000 people, well, last we had 5,000 plus people from 17 states, so we wouldn't be able to put a lar that large of a crowd gathering here on anyway. Um, uh, last but not least, the, I mean, that's the health, safety, and welfare thing right there. But there's also a fiscal component too. Um, so spending these funds right now when we know we know already that we're going to have decreased revenues in next fiscal year. So um, this, this, this particular... Plus, plus, if we put it on, we're going to have serious distancing problems. And we ought to go with our neighbors and nags here. But go ahead, James. Go ahead. Finish up. That was perfect. It was actually perfect, Mr. Mayor, because I actually had a comment today from law enforcement that the idea that we can do social distancing of six feet with the number of visitors we would expect, uh, even a reduced crowd, would be uh, near impossible. So my recommendation not at this possible. point is to, yes, sir, yes, sir, I, I do not believe it's possible. So I'm recommending cancellation of the Fourth of July special event, including both the fireworks contract, contract and the fireworks grant agreement. Why don't you put in if if we use the motion until 2021? Oh, absolutely, Mr. Mayor. We just like Dare Day, we would be pleased to plan ahead for for Fourth of July 2021. <clears throat> yes, sir. So, do we have? Will we ourselves the town? Are we losing money other than the grant funding? 
you know, the uh, the only money that we would lose at this point, and this uh, that and thank, oh, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm addressing comment from Commissioner Walker. This is actually a really important point because if we don't cancel our fireworks agreement now, um, we would be on the hook for the forty-one thousand five hundred for the contract. Or if we canceled late, it would be four. It would be thirty-five thousand. Right now, um, if we cancel now, there's only a seventy-five hundred dollar uh, termination fee, um, which then the balance we refunded to the town. So we would actually recoup some of the money we've already paid as a pre-show advance. Yeah, I mean, All right, you've heard from time manager about. Four. Go ahead, somebody. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a difficult thing to do, but it's the right thing to do, and um, you know, it's. I mean, it's only two months away, and a lot could change you know, in two months. So we need to do what's best. Um, I guess I'll make a motion as much as I hate to. This is Commissioner Walker. I'll um, authorize the town manager to cancel the July 4th event, including the fireworks grant and the um, fireworks contract. All right. Is there a second? second? All right, it's who Mr. was that? Borland. Borland, the okay. second was from All right, Mr. Uh, Borland, sir. All right, there's a motion and a second that we canceled the July 4th fireworks and along with, what, what, what else you say, uh, Christine? You said something else too. But anyhow, yeah, the, we canceled July 4th. Oh, and recoup our money and, and uh, do the best we can. We're getting the money back, something like that. All right, you've heard the motion all in, uh, Favor, say aye. James, go ahead. Oh, thank you, sir. Yes, I'll go ahead and do the roll call. Um, the uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, aye or nay? Aye. aye. Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Walker, aye or nay? Aye. And Commissioner Collins, aye or nay? Aye. All right, the ayes seem to have it. Uh, the motion carries. We'll cancel the fireworks. Go ahead, James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as a point of privilege, if I may, um, the, uh, the the public can't see the faces um, here. Uh, I can, and I, I see uh, heavy hearts and sadness uh, from the members of the board of board of commissioner in this. And I want to acknowledge I want to acknowledge that and promise you that we will work hard to make the following year event uh, successful in, uh, as we try to return to normal. Thank you for that opportunity, Mr. Mayor. And I'll move on to the next agenda item. It's all right. Okay, right. item 8G. Thank you, sir. Item 8G is professional services contract for the town common. Uh, in this this particular this agenda item was referred to earlier. Um, in this in this case, the town has followed the state mandated uh, process by which we solicit professional services, including engineering, architecture, surveying, and landscape architecture. It's a very specific process. It's called a qualifications-based selection process. And the state requires us to select a firm based on their qualifications first, and only after they're selected and highest rated do we negotiate a contract at a fair fee. If those negotiations fail, then the statute directs us to negotiate with the next best qualified firm. Now, we did have four firms submit qualifications packages. They were uh, all responsive, uh, you know, they had the appropriate qualifications and they were they were ranked based on the criteria envisioned in the in the in the law um we had our our, our review team and if these criteria included technical approach work experience firm and staff qualifications and past performance um, we also posted this uh both locally and state statewide and we did follow the state statute in which we uh solicited historically underutilized uh, businesses as well um, our highest rated firm is SBA certified as a hub zone small business concern, and it's also pre-qualified by the North Carolina Department of Transportation as a small professional service firm. Um, what I'm proposing is that the, the highest rated firm, Albemarle and Associates out of Kill Devil Hills, that, that uh, would be allowed in accordance with the law to negotiate a contract with the highest rated firm, or if they're unsuccessful, go to the next highest rated, and that authorize the town manager to sign the contract and any amendments thereto. And that's the recommendation uh, uh, put before the board. All right, you heard from the manager. What's your wishes? Could you repeat Any that? Um, this is Betty Selby. Could you repeat that one more time, please? Thank you. Yes. Um, it, and uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mayor President Selby wanted me to repeat, and I'll go ahead. I'll list the, 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 three, the three steps that are required. Is that it? 
Thank you, Mayor Bogdan. Yeah. Three steps would be that um, the town manager is to negotiate a contract with the highest rated firm. Number two, in the event contract negotiations are unsuccessful with the highest rated firm, the town manager is to negotiate with the second highest firm and so on until a contract is successfully negotiated. And three, the town manager is to sign the contract and any amendments thereto. Is that satisfactory, Mayor Potem? Yes, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, you've heard from the town manager. What's your wishes? What exactly are the uh, professional services this prospective company is going to do? Yes, uh, thank you. And uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll address uh, Commissioner Mann's questions. So this is uh, actually um, is a multi is a multidisciplinary project. So the first, the, of course, civil engineering is the number one thing to be performed because this work requires a, pro a professional engineer license in the state of North Carolina for things like utility connections, uh, the, the, the grading, the infrastructure, stormwater calculations, et cetera. But they're not the only ones. They may also have surveyors for multiple parts of this. The surveyors, yes, we have a survey for the pre-existing condition, but they'll need to do some surveying and location of things early in the job and afterwards do our as built. In addition to surveyors, we also have a landscape architect. Because we, 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 you know, here we've got, yes, we have a conceptual plan, but we need also to make sure that we that this goes together, everything from turf grass to plantings to trees. Um, and we, of course, there are miscellaneous things, uh, things like the sidewalks, site fixtures, um, uh, 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 furnishings, fixtures, and equipment, they call it FF&E. Um, so they've, they've got a, a good portfolio in front of them for these professional services, but we believe we've got a, a well-rated firm uh, here located here in Dare County. And this would be from the start of the project to completion of just the first phase? Or? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll address uh, uh, Commissioner Walker's comments. And that's another great point. It's not just the type of service they provide, it's also the, the breadth. So the breadth is basically from start to finish. They'll, they'll start with the design, they call it, we've already conceptual design, but they'll now do the design development. Then they'll do, they, they call them CDs or construction documents. And then during the project, they will also be here to do the inspections, uh, CE and I construction engineering and inspection, close out as built drawings and the rest to make sure that we get what we paid for, that it's installed property and it's not at the wrong grade or there are bus there. We want them to be turnkey. I don't want, I don't want another, firm, another firm to come in and say and point their finger at the engineer or the surveyor. So I really wanted a turnkey project where they will do it all and they'll be responsible for it all and we'll hold their feet to the fire to build this thing right. Would they be who's negotiating with uh, contractors to, to come in? Or? Um, and uh, Ms. Mayor, uh, Commissioner Mann's comment is about the negotiation. negotiation. Uh, this firm offered as part of their service to assist with the bidding process. And um, what we'll do is, in this case, it'll be an invitation for bids. It's gonna be at a value um, high enough that the state law requires us to be formal sealed bids. Um, it's going to be over half a million dollars in construction costs. So that's going to be at the, the, the top level of requirements in the state statute. While the engineer will prepare all the bid documents, they will respond to uh, with addenda or questions from the contractor. However, the actual management of the procurement will be the ones that we're, will be the ones that have final say on conditioning the bids, making sure we don't have uneven bids where someone takes a line item and they try and sneak in the bid. Also, we want to make sure we investigate qualifications because it's, we don't just want a bidder, we want the contractors to be both responsive and responsible. So by responsive means they properly answer the invitation for bids, but by responsible that they have the ability to do the work and they're, you know, not, uh, you know, they're not debarred from contracting, things like that. So we want a firm that can work hand in hand with us, but we as staff will have the final say, uh, final say in making the recommendation to the board for its approval. And having been through these bids many, many times, uh, we're ready for it. This has to be uh, Commissioner Collins. Uh, so the, the final approval will actually come from us, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yes, Commissioner Collins. This this board has final approval over uh, over that over that contract, and that's a big one. So it'll be the biggest one since I've been here. So that's going to be real important. This board sees it first, and of course, it'll uh, see the appropriate daylight as part of that process. In fact, uh, even the bid opening itself for a project of that size is open to the public. Thanks. With a lost revenue, um, the financial impact will be okay. Oh, yes, uh, Mayor, uh, 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 Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Selby was asking about the finances. And in our current pass on the budget, we do have enough money to fund the project. Uh, just, just for the record, the actual costs for this 
we, we, you know, we pay them and then we get reimbursed by the grant, but we need to have enough cash flow to cover that, of course, uh, and that's projected for the next fiscal year budget, which you will um, we'll be having the, uh, the, the retreat here shortly. So um, this okay. it makes good sense. And I think that's a great question because why proceed with engineering if you can't proceed with the work? Uh, but what we were seeing is absolutely this project can, can proceed. Does we have a grant for almost half of the project costs? The, the grants to, uh, yes, um, yes, Commissioner Walker, the grants 221,000 uh, out of the 763,000 construction costs. Also, I will tell you that we um, made it past the first round for a letter of intent for an EEG grant, a little over $80,000. Uh, kudos to town, town planner who, who did the uh, vast, vast majority of that work. And also, uh, she is at her desk right now performing work on a part of grant, a parks and recreation grant out of the state. Uh, we had a lot of success with that in my prior jurisdiction and looking for a six-figure grant on that as well. So um, we're actively working on additional sources of revenue for this, even while we're embarking on design. Is there, a, I don't know if it's appropriate to ask or not, but is, is there a uh, estimate for what, uh, I guess, these services would cost the town? Uh, yes, it, the, the estimate um, was it originally estimated $75,000 with a potential contingency of $15,000. Um, and what we would, what I would like to do in a contract like this um, is perhaps to phase it so that we don't sit there and we contract it phase by phase through our design development and our construction documents and then the actual construction phase. I want to make sure we phase that so this isn't just some big lump sum com, uh, contract that, that those tend to go sideways when it comes to billing time. So we want to make sure we get it down to those different phases. Is, and is there something... Uh, in our codes or ordinances that require us to have a uh, engineer for this type of project? Um, yeah, yes, Commissioner Mann. This is uh, for, from, uh, from state law, I've, I've researched both state law and the North Carolina Board of uh, Engineers and Professional Surveyors to perform all this work with, with utilities and infrastructure and the stormwater statement um, and, the other, and the other engineering and surveying work. We do need a licensed professional for that. I thought it was part of the agreement to the county. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Well, in the grant documentation, at least, was the engineers stated, wasn't it? Um, uh, Commissioner Burke, I don't have, actually, I don't have that in front of oh, me. Okay. I'm sorry, but we can, yeah. we can absolutely look that up. That's no, fine. Thank you. Thank you. All right, is there any more questions? So we're, we're vote on it tonight and then talk about the budget next Thursday. So I'd like to see the budget, and that's just fun for me. Make sure because everybody across the whole nation is taking a big reduction in the revenue. Yeah. What? This is going to throw up a schedule. All right. If we don't do it tonight, correct? You know, if we don't pass this tonight, we're going to throw off this the engineering students. Accelerated schedule they have laid out. Uh, yes, and, and Commissioner Burke was asking about the accelerated schedule. It wouldn't. It, it does envision us approving it tonight, so that they can get started uh, here in the next couple of weeks and right. get get rolling with it. And and certainly, um, um, we will phase this contract if there's a, if we do get into a concern, we are going to phase it so that we're um, we do get phased, we we have the overall contract. We do it phase by phase to minimize that risk. That's helpful. So about one week will make a difference in the phasing. Oh, uh, uh, I, I, I no. It, uh, it does. It doesn't make a difference as the, as the phase. It doesn't make a difference as the phasing. It just all you know. You know what I'm saying. And, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're really you know in the kind of a tight timeline. Um, I mean, aggressive timeline. I guess is a better way to put it. Um, you know, we're delaying it a month, and I think we still in phasing it and having that final approval. It feels like we're still going to have control to trim the fat if we uh, if we need to. We'll still be very involved, I'm assuming, in the contract after, I mean, if we were, once we approve uh, the engineer, I mean, we're still highly involved in, think, I mean, I know that they're doing, selecting their own contractors and things, but like Jason said, if there's things that, you know, we want to trim or the budget's, you know, getting out of hand, um, it, we're going to see that, right? Uh, yes, and that actually, that's a great point that I also may address uh, some of Mayor Pro Tem Selby's and Commissioner Borland's and Commissioner Walker's uh, comments is that 
we're phasing the work with the with the engineer so that we can um, make sure that it's <laughs> make sure that we're not we're not sitting here uh, committing to the whole thing and for some reason the whole world turns upside down and and, and we're, we don't need that construction phase or whatever I don't obviously don't foresee that happening we're currently projecting that we have at more uh, adequate funding for this <coughs> but one of the things is, that I failed to mention is one of their tasks and activities. It's one that I usually think is, is embedded in this. They have to give us cost estimates. Before we ever go to bid, this engineer is expected to give us cost estimates so that, we, you know, that this board can make decisions like, okay, do we, you know, should we focus on the parking lot, green space, and the landscaping first and save some money on site furnishings, benches, uh, whatever that might be. So what we can do is make sure that this board can see that information, the cost estimate before we ever go to bid, and make sure this project doesn't get, you know, doesn't start to cost burden the town, or if cuts need to be made, where they can, can be made, because that's the time to do it. On one of the mechanisms I used to use on my other projects, like the law enforcement center, was we would take our base contract and then do add alternates or deductive alternates. And what I mean is, what are the things we have to have? Well, if you start with parking lot and parking, for example, um, parking lot and uh, green space park area, what are the things that we could add or delete to, to uh, adjust the budget as part of that projection? But you got the cost estimate for the engineer first, but then the contract that they're expected to bid those additive or deductive alternates so that you, before you approve that contract, you have like almost a menu to choose from um, to, that will fit the available funding. So we'll make sure we take that approach both with the engineer, but also if we present those bids to, to the contract. And, and I'll, I'll come up question answer, but I certainly want to see the park lot because that's um, very important to Mania, yeah. but I do want to check out the cost estimates. I think the other important thing, I mean, worth noting is this is authorizing you to negotiate the contract. We're going to have that budget retreat next week before that's all finalized. I would, I would assume. I know you move quick on some stuff. But, um, there's a possibility, I think, I'm going to get in this a little bit, that we could see, I'm like you, Jason, that we could probably see uh, the budget before this gets finalized. Is that possible, James, or what are you thinking? Yeah, what we could do, uh, what we could do, Mr. Mayor, is to um, go ahead and have the, the contract ready I to roll. I think I know where I bet, I bet he's coming from is we're proving something that we haven't proved in the budget. and. We're asking more for good faith than anything else, which I'm sure is good professional. I've heard of them. I don't even know who they are. But we, I say we have got to have a professional services contract with somebody to carry all this out. And I don't think we, I guess, when is it? May the 14th? Yes, Mr. Mayor, the, uh, the, that retreat is May 14th. So if, there, if, a, if a motion should come, it could be modified to say, uh, to move, to authorize the town manager to negotiate the town common contract and to sign the contract and any amendments. However, but not to sign such contract and, uh, or to sign such contract no earlier than May 15th. So that way the board has seen. May, uh, May, the May 15th, that, that, should, that, that should clear everything up because then we'll get a look at the budget and this almost at the same time. Yeah, because I, I, I certainly would like to see that project started. But, you know, being like the officials, I want to know about the money too. And Jason cleared it up too. Yeah, sure, Betty. That's only fair. You, <laughs> We all should be concerned about the money. Uh, well, yeah. one way or the other, we've had a lot of discussion on this. Can we have a motion one way or the other? Somebody make a motion, do something. This is, uh... This is Commissioner Borland. I move to authorize the town manager to negotiate the town common contract and to sign the contract and any amendments, but not to sign it until no earlier that, than yeah, the that, that should satisfy everybody. All right. Uh, is there a second to that motion? I'll second. This is Christine Walker. All right. There's a motion second that we'll. Uh, approve uh, Jason's motion. I don't exactly remember what it was, but uh, go ahead and poll, James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Berg, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Walker, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, I or nay? Aye. Uh, uh. 
Mr. Mayor, you're pre right. presented with a unanimous vote. Yeah, and my, the motion seems to carry, so it's approved as uh, the motion says, and so we'll move on. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Old business. Next, yes, sir. Uh, item number 8H, this is very, this may sound very similar because- You know, James, this is, this is a, James, I got to say, this is a long agenda for a teleconference call, but I guess it had to be to get it all cleared up. I don't know, but it's awfully long, but go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, item We're 8H. into it, it's what I'm saying. We can't do nothing about it. <laughs> yes, sir. Item 8H is, the, is a contract for the wastewater system asset inventory and assessment. Uh, this particular, this sounds very similar because like the last contract, we had to do it for a state law to, to um, get engineering and related services procured. Uh, we did indeed follow the state process. But we, we had four firms that, uh, that submitted by the deadline and, and had qualified personnel. Um, this particular one was also uh, solicited statewide as well as locally. And the highest rated firm uh, listed as number one was Green Engineering out of Wilson, North Carolina. Um, I will mention for, from a budgetary standpoint as that came out that the, this particular project is, um, it's, has a, its total budget is $172,500, which consists of a $150,000 grant from the state of North Carolina, and then a 15% local match of $22,500. And these funds were already appropriated by the Board of Commissioners in its current fiscal year budget. Um, and the, I'm recommending that the same process uh, uh, where we're authorized to negotiate a contract with the firm and continue with uh, in succession and also <coughs> then to sign the contract and many, any amendments there too. All right, were, were they only better, James? Uh, no, sir, we had four firms, um, one out of Wilson, one out of Raleigh, one out of Kitty Hawk and Powell's Point, and one out of Kitty Hawk and Kill Devil Hills. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Just how long is this? Do we know how long this project's gonna take? Uh, yes, sir, so I'll address the, uh, Commissioner Walker's question. A length of time, the, the, the duration of this will be negotiated with the firm as part of the process, as part of the process, both the fee and the schedule. But it's our understanding that this thing will be done well within, uh, within a four, four month period, plus or minus a month. So. It'll be a relatively quick hitter, but it's very important to our sewer system to know where, where all those assets are because many of those assets were constructed by uh, other contractors on behalf of other developers and then the system handed to the town. So making sure we got, got those assets, I mean, our staff will be able to know, you know where a manhole is and you know, where an air relief valve is, all these things, they'll, they'll have that information that so we can better serve our customers. I mean, we've been working on this for a while. Is this the same we did the water? We did the water. Also. Yes, um, and uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, Commissioner Walker is referring to another grant we uh, we applied for. That was the water system asset inventory and assessment grant. Unfortunately, the town uh, did not did not get that grant from the state. They indicated again that our water rates were too low and didn't support too low. It. Yeah, but I unfortunately, but still, given the current situation, I couldn't recommend increasing in the last the fee schedule adopted earlier. I couldn't recommend increasing that water rate, so we may have to apply in a, in a future year for the water system. Yeah, I, I mean, I think this is a very important project. Um, so I'd like to authorize uh, the town manager to negotiate the w wastewater system inventory contract uh, and to sign the contract and any amendments. All right, you've heard uh, Christine's motion. Is there a second? I'll second it, Richie. I'll second it, Mr. Okay, there's a motion to second. As to Christine's uh, motion, that's what I'm going to say because it's awfully long. Uh, all in favor, say aye. I mean, Paul, I'm, I'm sorry, James. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, yes sir. Um, I'll James? go ahead and pull. Yes, sir. I'll go ahead and pull. Um, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, Iron A. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Burke, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Walker, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, I or nay? Aye. All right. It's unanimous, so the motion carries. Uh, we'll move on, James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number 9A on the agenda. This is the recycling contract amendment. Uh, this has been before the board um, uh, multiple times as the uh, the contractor for the 
for the recycling curbside recycling program uh, had come to the town with two proposed amendments to the contract. We also have some late breaking news that came in just hours ago that I will share at the end of this presentation. Uh, first off, the board saw, uh, and the public has have access to the staff report where we solicited community feedback uh, regarding the program. Um, and, uh, and also provided the data, the data on that at prior meetings as public record. Uh, the contract amendments proposed by Bay, Bay Disposal are two. One is that they had a material resource facility uh, uh, close on them and they're now taking it to an incinerator that does waste to energy with recyclables. Our contract currently prohibits that. However, um, the state has now officially allowed their permit to do so because at least there is some recapturing of that energy and it's not just being disposed of in the landfill. So the state did confirm they've, they've extended that permit. Um, the other part that the state has nothing to do with is uh, the Bay Disposal was requiring a 50% cost increase for the service. Um, they believe they could do that unilaterally. I've pointed out to them we have an agreement. Uh, they may have open contracts in other jurisdictions, but not in this one. Um, so so um, I know I don't want to labor all the all the uh, all the staff reports so uh, there were, I really want to split this into two things number one was the feedback on the incineration of recyclables uh, we didn't receive really big pushback from from public comment on this and it seems to be a reasonable compromise especially given the states have authorized this so I'm recommending that the board would approve the contract amendment allowing incineration but this is only for the length of time permitted by the state so we don't want to just make a permanent waiver we want to make sure we align with what the state's doing on that so that's number one. And number two is their con proposed contract amendment, uh, the 50% increase. Uh, they, they couldn't even guarantee that would be the last one. Uh, my, my strong recommendation is not to accept that. Um, I don't believe in unilateral price increases when you've got a firm contract and they desired a five-year term for that, not the two-year originally offered. Uh, now, a third point I wanna bring up, and it's not required in a motion, but it's information the board needs to hear um, just a, a few hours ago, we received a call from the representative of Bay Disposal. And Bay Disposal has indicated they've talked to other municipalities around here who are dealing with the same issue as well as the declining revenues. Uh, and we'd heard in the press of other jurisdictions that are either are considering changing or suspending these programs like this. So what Bay is offering now, if we choose to, is they would go back to the way it used to be here in Manio. So from, uh, I believe, uh, from the minutes I saw from like 2008 up to, up to basically 2017, it was a subscription-based service where people who wanted the roll carts would pay for the service and Bay Disposal would tip their carts in accordance with that. Um, in 2017, it was changed to a service where the town paid directly for that as opposed to the people who wanted to do the recycling. So um, it changed in 2017. Um, right now, what Bay is saying is that should we choose to do so, they would like to do a franchise agreement where they go back to that recycle that that uh, subscription-based service where they would charge eleven thirty-five per can per month to the users who desire to use recycling service. So they have offered that. I'm not re recommending the board take any action on that right now, but you needed to know that uh, should we uh, should the board take action tonight, I'd, I'm happy to get more information from them on not just clarifying how they're going to do that, um, but also the procurement of such a thing. We wanna make sure we don't violate state law and did not have time to research the statute on that in the three hours uh, before the board meeting that we had. So, but that was information you needed to know that there is an alternative out there being offered by the vendor. So but right, right now, the two things that I'm recommending now was one that I was suggesting the board approve the waiver of incineration in, uh, in accordance with the state permit. And number two, as a recommending denial of their request for a 50% price increase. Uh, this is Richie. Uh, uh, I just want to make sure I'm right. There was a five year contract with this company, right? Is it a five year term? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'll address Commissioner Burke's comment. The term of this started yeah. in June of 2017. It was a five, it was a five year term of agreement. Okay. The town mm -hmm. had originally suggested two years, the, the, the vendor wanted five. And obviously, we're only partway through that. Partway, okay. So we still basically have two years left. Yes, and to address Commissioner Walker's question, the answer is yes. We still have two years left on a five-year contract. But they're trying to amend that contract and increase their rate, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Rand's comment: They are proposing a unilateral pricing uh, price increase. 
Um, we, we, in some of our research, we found they may have so-called open contracts in other jurisdictions, which allow them to do that, perhaps on a yearly basis. That's not the case here in Manio. The, the contract is, is, is very clear on that point. All right, what, what knives head did uh... Uh, Mr. Mayor, they, they, uh, some of the other jurisdictions, Nags Head is actually, as part of their budget process, they, it was reported that they were proposing to potentially suspend the service. Now, when that was, since the time that was reported, though, bay disposal is now, I, I, they explained to us, approaching other jurisdictions here, perhaps with the same subscription-based proposal. So I, I did not know whether they gave this new proposal to Nags Head, but I would, I would suspect it's a, 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 a let, let me to, suggest this. I just asked because I did hear what they'd done. Uh, are yeah. the company basically, if we've signed a contract, aren't they breaking the contract? Yes, sir. It was our, it was, it was our determination that would be breach of contract. And my draft letter would, as um, I, uh, we, 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 have, we, we pointed it out verbally, but we would do so in writing, should, depending on what the vote tonight should yeah, I, I just ask because I think your suggestion might be all right with me. You're suggesting that for the people who want it, go ahead and subscribe to it. Is that right? That's what Bay Disposal is suggesting. And interestingly enough, some of the community feedback we had, uh, there were some folks who actually said they, they would use the subscription-based service if that was the option. So I thought that was that was interesting to hear, and yeah. apparently it was used significantly before it converted. So for what nine years, this service was used by as many as 243 households uh, in a subscription-based service. Was the last piece of information I saw, and that compares to the 275 to 285 currently being reported now. And that would yeah. really take the town that would be in the middleman. That would be direct to the customer. Yes, to Commissioner Mann's point, the town would have no contractual obligation uh, in terms of that. The, the roll cart tipping, probably the only legal thing we would have to do is deal with a franchise agreement of some sort, but that doesn't require us to, to pay bay disposal. Uh, so, okay. and thank you, Commissioner Mann, for, for that, that clarification. All right. Are you making a recommendation, James, or not? Did I hear one or not? Yes, sir. And, and it's really two separate, two separate, potentially two separate motions since they're the exact opposite of each other. My recommendation was to approve contract amendment one, allowing incineration at that waste to energy facility. Can we make it, it's just two motions, just one motion. Two. Two I'd like to make a sub note here if we can, uh, for our budget retreat next week, if we could add, uh, you might've already done it, but something to indicate um, like a on-site town uh, recycling drop-off center, whatever you wanna call it, but some kind of um, self-service uh, recycling center that the town can Yes, and, and Mr. Mayor, I'll address Commissioner Mann's question. That had been one of the options that was discussed previously and he actually identified maybe some sites east and west side of town uh, if we would do some of those, those uh, smaller recycling uh, kind of re convenience centers here. Um, and that's certainly an option for us to supplement as well. All right. Eddie, you put that formal motion or just suggestion? I, I move to approve the contract amendment number one, allowing incineration, and I also move to deny contract amendment number two for a price increase. All right, you've heard Eddie's motion. Uh, uh, I get him. Uh, go ahead. There's a second. Who? I don't matter. There's James. Who seconded? Made the second. Yeah. Mr. Okay. Uh, go ahead and poll, James. Thank you, sir. Mayor Pro Tem Selby, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Walker, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, I or nay? Aye. All right, the ayes seem to have it. Motion seems to carry. Uh, James, Thanks, is that what you heard? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, we we can verify the unanimous vote there, sir. All right. Item number 9B on the agenda, traffic and traffic calming measures on Sir Walter Raleigh. This was something the board had desired that we come back with additional information as we continue to um, uh, work with traffic as well as getting information on traffic calming measures. Uh, the Manual Police Department, on the traffic side, the Manual Police Department has had an a another round of data collection as well as enforcement that will supplement what you heard last time. Interestingly enough, uh, as shown in the staff report, we, di we, did have, um, we did have folks in the uh, in the traffic area, this is East Sir Walter Raleigh, East of 64, and then to the roundabout there at Keeper Etheridge's statue. 
Um, in this case, our traffic count in March was 13,495 and the 85th percentile speed was shown at 24 miles an hour. Interestingly, a hundred, we, uh, it was, although it was less than 1%, it's more than we'd ever want of people who were actually going uh, 30, 30 miles or higher. Uh, at that time, we had nine speeding citations issued along with 15 warnings for left of center driving. In April, that dropped. Uh, this, both the vehicle count stopped, uh, dropped uh, 10,999. Uh, down from 13,495, and this, this, the, at that 85th percentile, percentile speed was at 24 miles an hour. In this case, less vehicle, it was still less than 1%, but more than we'd like. 91 vehicles were shown to be driving 30 miles an hour or higher. Two speeding citations were issued. Um, interestingly, we, we believe, uh, this, uh, law enforcement believes that we may have reduced traffic count due to the current COVID-19 restrictions, of course, but they also noted that they had increased tickets on the parallel street. So, some people saw the enforcement on Sir Walter Raleigh, decided to use Fernando as a cut through, and some of us, and we have issued some tickets on that street as well now. So um, I'm pleased that MPD has, has stepped that up and we'll continue to, to address those. Um, traffic calming measures, we, uh, members of the community had expressed concerns about traffic calming measures that were installed by the town previously. Um, these are called sometimes bump outs, bulb outs, or curb extensions. And uh, I did confirm with DOT, uh, DOT said, uh, um, yes, the town had installed them with permission of DOT, it's DOT Road in the past. Uh, they said, should the town, town want to do a quick ask for permission to reverse that, uh, the town is free to do so. So we did hear back from the DOT on that issue. Um, in terms of pedestrian improvements, we, had, we did ask the DOT about installation of a crosswalk uh, there uh, right at the playground there next to Cartwright Park. Um, it's right now, and it looks like it's too close to the roundabout. It's only 250 to 260 feet away as I measured with the wheel. Um, but the, uh, the DOT will take it under advisement. We haven't heard back on that one yet, but that's a trickier one. Um, we also had seen in some previous plans about sidewalk on the north side of Sir Walter Raleigh. Um, and we, we would like to look for grant opportunities for that, should that be supported by the board you know, and, and its constituents. Um, with regard to signage, there had been a request to put no parking sign on the north side of Sir Walter Raleigh in, in front of Haven Creek Baptist Church. I did get confirmation back from DOT that uh, that wouldn't be allowed since that's a travel lane and there's not enough room to even shift the striping there. So DOT denied, denied that as, as well, but they did provide us you know, feedback. Uh, and last but not least, there were suggestions to add more 20 mile an hour speed limit signs. Uh, the town staff was prepared to do that. Of course, we have to ask permission from DOT, it's their road. And, Interestingly enough, I just found out yesterday that their records have it as a 25 mile an hour speed limit, not 20 mile an hour speed limit zone. So learn something new about that. And apparently that dated in 1983, well before my arrival here. So um, those, are, those are the latest uh, uh, updates um, on uh, Sir Walter Raleigh on those uh, four categories. I know that no more motions are required at this time, but if the board would like to you know, give us guidance on any of those issues, we will continue working with DOT and they've been very you know, receptive to the conversation involved in multiple departments. So staff is happy to continue that, that discussion with DOT should, should you like us to do so. Uh, this is Commissioner Collins. Uh, can we uh, get some additional signage that says uh, kids that play? There's a small one there, but we need a bigger one so people can see it. Uh, yeah, yes, Commissioner Collins, uh, Town Manager Ayers here. Yes, kids that play, I'll go ahead and um, see if we can get permission from, from DOT for that one. And that's something the town staff could also install. So hopefully we can uh, get some, get some uh, permission there. So are we saying that it is a 25 mile per hour zone? Um, yes, uh, Ms. Mayor, I'll, I'll address Commissioner Walker's question. The town has listed as a 20 mile an hour zone because as you know, as you've seen elsewhere, we're 35 miles an hour, or 20 miles an hour unless otherwise posted. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough though, DOT records, and they sent me the actually actual, um, their ordinance or their regulation that showed it as 25 miles an hour established back in 1983. So I just keep that information as sub, after this, um, after this is published. In 1983, what, in the park? What can we can we can we request that it be lower? Yes, um, um, Mr. Mayor, I'll just uh, com uh, com uh, Commissioner Walker's question. And Mayor and Mayor Pro Tem Selby men you mentioned uh, about you know, that was a while back where um, some of these things may not have existed there, whether it's mm -hmm. the, the park or the museum or whatever. Commissioner Walker's point about petitioning DOT for lowering. 
I'm going to, I want to investigate that a little bit because um, I want to be very careful in how we address this and don't, and don't have it go the wrong direction on us in terms of speed. Okay. But I'll, I, I can address that at staff level and try and do some inquiries without uh, upsetting the apple cart. This is Commissioner Kyle again. Uh, what the speed limit on the uh, east side of uh, this block is uh, twenty. Uh, yes, Commissioner. And then it's it's twenty on the other side. And it, in the report that I saw from NCDOT, they specifically referred to the segment from west of Sir Walter Raleigh to Biddeford Street. So they were very specific in their old eighty three ordinance on that segment of the street. Why is it five more? The speed limit is five more than it is on the other side. What, what was that? I don't make sense. Daryl, what did you say? Uh, we couldn't hear you, Daryl. why is it? Yeah, this is Daryl. I, I just asked the question, why is it five miles faster on one side and the other side? Uh, um, I, 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 yes, uh, Commissioner Collins, uh, and the, the DOT has a different, when, when they, when they well, they're in the 80s, when they were doing that, they had different, they would do uh, various kinds of data collection. And presumably, uh, again, I can't speak for them from that era, but when I saw it in other jurisdictions, they would do traffic counts, speed data collection, et cetera. And they would actually modify even, you know, if a stretch of road is different from one, one segment to another, they would do varying speed levels based on the data they collected at that time. Um, but, I'm, I, I, but I'm happy to try and figure out um, what kind of a path forward we might have to, let's just say, make it consistent. I have a question. Is it possible check it out for in the future um, when we're able to have some people in here for public comment, being that there's such a strong uh, presence of, of the community around there that um, had concerns that we maybe facilitate a public hearing about issues uh, on that street with send out an invitation to our DOT representative to have them here as well so we can kind of uh, have a roundtable discussion and involve our DOT rep along with the community to maybe remedy some of these issues. Uh, and, and yes, I'll address Commissioner Mann's uh, question. The, I'll, I'll go ahead and follow up with DOT and find out if our DOT rep and, the, and, their, and their staff and the community, we can have some form of hearing here so they can hear community concerns and I will follow up what process they have for that and see if there's some way we can push that sooner rather than later. Uh, and surely there's gotta be some way, uh, even in the current situation, to have the voices heard. So happy to, uh, happy to investigate that. All right. I think we've talked long enough on this. And I think uh, Eddie made a suggestion that we have a, a public hearing, Eddie. Is that what you want to, to talk about the traffic? Uh, measures and everything yeah i guess public hearing would be the appropriate term for it with our dot rep yeah are you asking that some of the public be invited or all the public be invited all the public be invited yeah yeah that's what I'll, I'll I, would, just, I, don't, I don't i don't think we've been very fair with this with the public that's involved but that's just my opinion and i don't have a vote uh i think that would be good to have dot here represent <sighs> And then talk about it at a round table. That's my idea. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'll appreciate the feedback from um, from the board of commissioners, and we'll continue uh, we'll continue working with uh, DOT at different yeah. levels to see if we can move forward. And if you'd like, to, if you'd like me to move to the next agenda item, yeah, I'm yeah, move to C. Thank you, sir. Next up, um, item nine C. This is new business. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, this is, we are under old business here. This is, uh, it was initially was a conversation with the Board of Commissioners about utility relief during the current uh, coronavirus COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic. Um, this one at the, at the last meeting, there was a request to kind of consider you know, different options on this, uh, ranging from uh, ranging from kind of a, uh, an across the board, you know, what, uh, let's gather the data on what it would cost to provide relief uh, in different, for example, uh, residents and businesses, et cetera, uh, as well as some of the other. I do have also have some new information on this that will help. So in, this, in the staff report shared in the package available for, for the members at home or, or following along, uh, one of the options was to kind of look at an estimate of what it would cost for utility bills for all accounts from May 1st to September 1st, plus by category. 
So what we've seen here is um, we've got a, a spreadsheet that basically shows May, June, July, and August. Now keep in mind, July is also our, our quarterly billing in addition to those who are billed on a monthly basis. So that's why July is, is, is that quarterly payment is traditionally higher. Uh, what we're seeing here is we've broken into two real areas. Residential and commercial is one part, um, and we started to see on that four month period, 334,712.79 for residential, 156,612.30 and 30 on commercial for a total of 491,325.09 as the estimate for that four month period from 5.1 to 5.9 for residential and commercial. Now, we did split out institutional irrigation. Uh, it would be, it was, it was my understanding that, that that is, those would be separate things. Uh, those would be separate things, but those numbers are shown in there just for, you know, comparison purposes for the total, so that we could show the total water uh, spend on that, on that four month period. Um, so, but that was, one, that was one approach was to kind of look at this as, a, as an across the board thing. We've got the data there to show that. Um, a second option, uh, was to look at, we had uh, looked before at that resident relief fund that originally that was targeted just for residents, but then there was the question, would that, could that be extended to businesses? And there's nothing in the statute that would prohibit it, prohibit that fund being extended to businesses as long as it's coming out of the general fund and not the utility fund. Um, so that one at the time it was estimated, it was just, it was just a limit put out there of a hundred thousand dollars and it was only supposed to run through the emergency period and up to 90 days following uh, that period because there may be there's going to be people still hurting even after the emergency declaration ends. Um, a third option, and this is something we also looked at and made sure we were okay from a statutory perspective. Um, the governor's executive order would it, it allows a, a repayment here for people who are have past due or a rear arrearages as they call it. It would give them up to six months to to get back you know the, to to repay that that money. Um, but one thing that we have the ability to do, and the board has already uh, allowed this in, in, our, in the recent emergency declaration, was to do perhaps longer repayment periods. So if someone's really in tough shape, giving them, say, 9 to 12 months to repay that arrearage, and dolls, so, that, so now they're paying the regular monthly bill, now they get back on their feet, so, and then 112, 1 9th, or 1 12th of what was past due seemed like a flexible way to do that. Um, that was another approach that, that could be done as well. So we were trying to come up with some different approaches uh, with different pros and cons. One piece of information that's new that you probably want to hear: um, what's the order? What's the order of magnitude here? So far, what are we seeing the impact on our customers? So the latest information we have, and this is what we're having: we're having a new report we have to submit to the state as part of this executive order. So um, we're obliged to report to the state current past due accounts, and this is for the entire month of April. So when the executive order was in place from March 31 till the end of April, we have. Residential accounts, we have $7,709.88 as past due. And on commercial accounts, we have $10,808.63 for the non-residential non -residential accounts. So our total past due uh, here in, uh, during this, well, we've been in since March, so now up, you know, up to the, 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 here at the beginning of May, is $18,518.51 worth of past due bills. So. I was, I'd be honest, I was worried that number would be much, much higher. Um, so um, that one, that one was, was actually a, a interesting data to hear. I thought you ought to hear the latest information we got here. How was that compared to other, uh, other months like pre-pandemic numbers? Uh, it's, it's higher than pre-pan, it's higher than pre, higher than pre-pandemic numbers. Um, and it's, and we also, I, I will, I will say though, um, going back like year over year over year, there has been significant variation. Um, one, one, one thing that we found in the past year, our, uh, for example, our customer service representative has been calling past due accounts as opposed to just having it go past due. And they actually had reduced uh, by a significant margin past due accounts we even had over the last 12 months. So, um, but I, I will say it's, it's, it's definitely up due to the current, current crisis. I'm just thankful it's not worse. And folks, folks are obviously feeling the effects of this going on. Well, James, what are you doing? Are you asking us? Are you just giving us information? Or you ask us for a motion? Uh, and, and no, sir, no, no motions are required at this time. But I know well, the I board. Thought, I thought we handled that last time. But now, how about this six months and twelve months? Yes, sir. The, the board already authorized me to to take and do payment programs as appropriate. I wanted to make yeah. sure that the board asked with options this time. I just want to make sure you had the information. 
we can continue yeah. those payment plans should the board desire to, to not take any other action. So there's really yeah. no motion at this time. And honestly, our suspension of disconnections doesn't end until the end of June anyway. So if the situation changes and gets much worse in terms of our, our folks who are, have passed through accounts, the board can take action in June should you see these numbers change. Well, you'll, you'll let us know about that then. Yes, sir. Um, this is Commissioner Walker. I, I'm concerned, though, uh, still with the um, the fee, the bank fee on um, the online payments or the phone payments. Um, has that has the bank responded? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, this is for Commissioner Commissioner Walker's question about the convenience fees, uh, and the board had taken a, a quick action on that to make it more convenient for the people for our customers to actually do this. Uh, we're using a, thir a third party credit card company that's, that's working, all, working in conjunction with our bank. Uh, they had to send it to legal because this, this must not happen very often. So they, they expect to us to have, some, to have our um, uh, new documents to sign next week. However, uh, as I put out in my town manager's report, we are crediting anybody who paid convenience fees since the board took action, mm -hmm. they're being refunded to their account and we're tracking every single one okay, of those. We want to make sure the public gets gets that convenience. We're going to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I've had I've had some you know right. questions about that. And I just you know I think it's the least we could do to make it easier um, if we're not going to you know offer any other kind of relief. I think because I I pay my stuff online, so I noticed on my bill I paid the credit or the convenience fee, and then on my next month's bill it was uh, that amount was credited to my account, so it's basically taken off, so. Thank you, Commissioner, man. That, that makes me feel good that it's actually working for you know, one of our customers, so thank you for sharing that, and I'll, I'll uh, share with the finance staff as well. All right, Xavier, anything further on the C? This is Commissioner Tyler. Uh, this pandemic will be over with before we decide what we're gonna do for the citizens of the town as far as water and sewer. I mean, water, this water thing, so I think we need to do something right quick. I like that second idea myself, the one that we did we talked about the last at the last meeting, which is the establish the uh, relief fund with a maximum of five hundred dollars per household and a limited total value of a hundred thousand dollars. I'm sorry, I really didn't understand you. I don't know if everybody else did. I couldn't I couldn't decipher i got a bad connection like i said earlier yes yes sir mr mayor uh commissioner would you, Collins, yeah would you repeat it yes in his word in james so i could understand you yes sir mr mayor the commissioner okay, did, commissioner did you hear me james? yes sir i I've, I've got it here um commissioner collins uh put a motion on the floor to, to establish a resident relief fund with limitations on use, maximum $500 per household and a limit on total value of $100,000 for the program. He, he did make a motion? Yes, I, Mr. Commissioner Collins, did I, 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 I thought I heard you say that was your motion. Am I, did I read yeah, that? that is, I'll, I'll make it as a motion because we need to do something and stop messing around with this. Is that on water and sewer or everything? That's water and sewer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't disagree with that. But that, I mean, I'll second the motion in order to have more discussion. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Commissioner Walker has has seconded the motion in order. All to right, you'll have to repeat the motion because I really didn't understand it. Go ahead, James. Yes, sir. I mean, it, with with, with Daryl's approval, of course. Yeah, yeah, James. Thank, thank you. Um, the the motion was on the floor was to establish a resident relief fund with limitations on use maximum 500 per household and a limit on total value hundred thousand dollars for the program yeah okay all right uh y'all have heard the motion uh is there any discussion that's where we'll get into it yeah i think just to point out the the alternative is and i understand the thought to act now but the alternative is the because we've paused or, or ceased through the end of june late fees that we've got time to wait without really any change uh, to see how things do change you know and, and then you know if, if that's not doing enough um, the current motion on the table then um, you know see where we're at in a month 
Uh, so, I mean, I, I understand the, the idea to want to knock it out right now, make sure that we're taking care of uh, people. And I don't think that delaying it a month to make that decision, I think that just equips us to make a, a better decision without hurting people in the interim. I know it hurts to see a bill keep showing up that you're not paying, um, but really it's just the emotional <laughs> impact to receiving it because we're going to hopefully take care of it through action in June. Okay. Yeah, yes, well, yes. Now, James, help me out here. If it's my understanding, it's state law that sooner or later people got to pay their utility fees. Is that right? Uh, yes, yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. And if right. I have... Is, is, is uh, Dell asking for granted relief of that action or not? What, what, Dell, what are you asking for? Yeah, I'm, I'm asking for uh, what we talked about on the May 15th meeting, which was to establish a fund with a maximum of $500 household and a, a limit of a total value of $100,000. And like I said before, this money is coming from one spot to another spot. It's not The money is not leaving us. These people are just getting relief on their bill if they can't. And everybody's not going to take advantage of this because some people have pride in, in, in want be able to take care of the business. So everybody in the town is not going to take take uh, advantage of this. So and I don't think we'll spend $100,000. Well, Dale, I'm not James, you want to help me out on this and understand it? how yes, do sir. we get around it without when we got a state requirement that the, the water bills had to be paid sooner or later? Uh, even, yes, if, even if it's 12 months down the road or say 24 months down the road, it's still got to hold it. Am I right? Yes, sir. With the, there's, there, and there's a couple, two parts to this. One is the, um, w there is a prohibition against using utility mm -hmm. fund fees for um, a waiver yeah, of that. That's right. But, but there's a different state law that would allow us to use general fund dollars. And I believe that's what Commissioner Collins is referring to. Okay. Based on, and then to address Commissioner Borland's comment, the governor's executive order already uh, does indeed uh, take us out to the end of June so that there are no late fees or, or disconnect fee or even disconnections uh, until the end of June under the current executive order. So uh, nobody, and, and under, and under this board's own uh, emergency declaration done before the governor, there's, there's no um, disconnections gonna happen, happen right now. And we take, uh, I think this board did, did a great leadership role in trying to take care of the community even before the, if we got the word from Raleigh. I just would like to make sure that the customers and the residents know, you know, the policy or about the repayment plan and, um, you know, the fee, the late fees and things, um, you know, like Daryl said, there's going to be some people that are going to pay the bill and go without something else, unfortunately, um, because of their pride. But, um, you know, and I'm sure that Kim and the other staff, you know, are making them aware. I hope that that is an option. Um, or if we could somehow advertise it you know, at the drop box. I'm not sure how to get the word out on that, but I mean, I just, you know, I just hate it. I know that, you know, people, it, it is, you know, it, it's been, it's, it's felt like a couple months. It's almost a couple months now for some people that have been out of work, um, you know, so I know that, um, you know, it's getting tight and, you know, I, I, I want to help them as much as I can. And, um, but if we could at least get the word out on that, on the options. Um, and Mr. Mayor, if I may address Commissioner Walker's um, con concerns here, if uh, it's all right. Um, yeah. There's, the, and the Commissioner brings up a good point. So in, con in accordance with the Governor's Executive Order 124, the town has taken the following, took the following steps to notify all of our customers. In addition to notices on the website, uh, press release, social media, we also did a uh, flyer in English and Spanish in every water bill that went out. Um, both monthly and we got, of course, the quarterlies here as well. But um, that was, you know, that, that gave them a full, th a full knowledge about suspension of discon uh, disconnect disconnections and um, no penalties right now and uh, all that information, as well as the six-month payment plan the governor said. But to Commissioner Walker's point, uh, we, if, if the board is okay, we, we could advertise the longer payment terms 
that the board has authorized us, you know, has authorized us to do so the folks know they have some additional relief even beyond what the governor has stipulated in his executive order. So um, we've tried to get the word out in, in as, as every channel we can to every single rate payer, but certainly we can do more if the board's comfortable with extending longer repayment terms. Yeah, just, All right, well, go ahead. So much. Just know there's a lot of information right now. You know, everybody's trying to stay on top of everything, and you know, everything policies are changing, and um, you know, the dates and things, and it's hard to keep track of it all. I was going to ask about the, the flyer, um, but then as you were talking too, it made me think, is, is any of that automated where it's printing a late fee on the bill, even though it's not actually due? Because, um, you know, the, when I open up our mail, I, I stand above the trash can and I, I open it up and I throw everything but the, what's got the dollar amount. And uh, so I probably would, you know, if I opened that mail, I probably would have done that with it. Um, so if, it, if then I've got the late fee on the actual bill, I'm not going to see that. And I know that's my own fault, but um, is, the, is the late fee showing up on the bill is my question. Right. And, 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 for, and Mr. Mayor, I'll answer Commissioner Borland's question. Our understanding is we're, we're obliged to let folks know what those, you know, what they would, what those late fees would have been and that we have to report that to the state, what the late fee would have been and how many accounts we would have disconnected. But I also see... You know, one of the ways we thought was a great thing was to stuff the mailer with, with you know, with a, a, bilingual, a bilingual message. But even even that may not have reached all of our rate payers. So we can certainly redouble our efforts if that's appropriate. Yeah. Well, we've got a motion we got dispensed with. You can't just, just ignore it unless Daryl wants to withdraw it or go on forward with it. And you've heard his motion. Uh, and so... Uh, well, can we get a second? Can we, go ahead, Daryl. Let's just see what the pledge of the board is on this motion. All right. Uh, is there a second to Daryl's motion? Uh, the, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Commissioner Walker had, had seconded uh, Commissioner Collins. Okay, I, I didn't hear. I'm sorry. I, I, I have trouble understanding or hearing. Okay, uh, there's a motion second on Daryl's motion. All yes, sir. in yes, favor, sir. take a poll, James. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, aye or nay? Aye. Uh, that's an aye. Uh, uh, Commissioner Burke? Aye. aye. Commissioner Mann? Nay. Commissioner Borland? Nay. Com Commissioner Walker? Aye. Commissioner Collins? Aye. The eyes seem to have it. There's two nays. Is that correct, James? That, that's correct, Mr. Mayor. The motion carries five to two. Okay. Well, the motion carries, and we'll go on with the motion. I really don't know what it is, so you'll have to explain it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, as a point of clarification, I gave you the wrong number. It's it, motion still carries. It's four to two. So uh, thank, uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Walker, for the clarification. Appreciate that. Um, next up on the agenda, uh, item 9D. Um, this is the this is the selection of town attorney. Um, this particular topic is uh, one that the uh, the board has seen, and the, and of course the public has seen that there was a, a request for proposals um, out there. Uh, proposals were were submitted by uh, two uh, law firms here in the area, and uh, this would this would be the time when the board would have its opportunity to select the town attorney, presumably through a, a nominating a nominating and discussion <coughs> process. Um, what, one other thing that I would mention is that uh, should the board should the board select a town attorney tonight, um, I would respectfully request that um, that the board would uh, authorize the town uh, town manager to um, to assist the board in, in negotiating and signing a written contract for legal services with the new town attorney. These uh, firms have submitted proposals. I, I think it's absolutely appropriate it's appropriate for the board to have a written agreement, and certainly I'm. Um, ready and willing to uh, assist you in, in formalizing that and of course bringing it to the board for ratification as appropriate. All right. Second part. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll address uh, Commissioner Borland's question. On that second part, there a motion would be needed, but I know that's premature. I was just making sure um, that you're, you know I'm here and ready to assist. I know the first order of business would be for the, uh, for the presiding officer, Mr. Mayor, to call for nominations, uh, which of course, uh, according to Robert, 
I guess I guess you're going to help me along, James. We got to, we'll have to open nominations for the appointment of the town attorney. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. So we'll open nominations for the town attorney. I nominate Jeff Malone. And Mr. Right. Mayor, uh, that was Mayor Pro Tem Selby who nominated Jeff Malarney uh, as town attorney. Okay, Jeff Malarney's name has been suggested as another name. I'll right, nominate Ben Gallup. Mr. Mr. Mayor, that was Commissioner Burke uh, rec uh, nominating uh, Ben Gallup as town attorney. Okay. Uh, uh, this is Commissioner Collins. Uh, for the record, uh, I the mayor should recuse himself from, from voting on this. Uh, I'm citing an ethical conflict of interest with one of the nominees. Uh, Mr. Milan is a longtime friend of Mayor Owen's family, and as mayor, who's the chief officer in charge of the town government, it's not uh, best practice or in the best interest of the town for him to appoint the friend of his family to the upper echelon of town government, for which he has a uh, complete oversight and direct supervision. Also, I'd like to add to the record, the request for proposals that were sent out by the town for, on February the 14th, soliciting the proposals for the town attorney. I'd also like to add to the record the two proposals that we, we received from Milani and McCowan, and the other one from uh, Thorn, Thornhall, Raleigh, Ellis, and Milan, so that the citizens can see for themselves what some of us believe is the best interest of the time for a firm to have the institutional knowledge, the resources, and also as often their services to the town at a substantial discount that in the long run will save the town money. Well, for Dale's information, uh, I was not planning on voting. I don't remember ever having the permission to vote. I thought the uh, mayor usually stayed uh, aloof of the voting and didn't have a right to vote. And if I'm corrected, I think that was passed many years ago in the time. I don't know what Daryl's intentions are, but they certainly don't sound audible because uh, if he's referring to my son, he has no interest in Manio and doesn't care for Manio and never has, which I love Manio and I do care. I, I, I don't, don't know, know what Daryl is referring to. I'd love to know because I could rebuttal him. But I don't recall since I've been here for one year, I've ever voted on one thing, which I'm not allowed to vote about according to the, uh, the ordinances of the past, which Daryl was a part of. Okay, well, all you have to do recuse yourself from this vote. I don't have to recuse. I just don't vote. I'm not sure what Daryl said. The audio is... The, yeah, the end of that was uh, yeah. scratchy for me. At the end, I added to the record the request for proposals that were sent out by the town on February 14th, 2020, soliciting legal services. I also add to the record the two proposals that we received from uh, Malone and McCowan and from Hawthorne, Raleigh, Ellis, and Milan. So the citizens can see for themselves who the some of us on this board feel is the more uh, capable firm to represent the town. Uh, with the institutional knowledge, the to uh, unlimited resources, and also as offering their service to the town at a substantial discount that will eventually save the town money in the long run for legal services. Yeah, I, I caught that. Thank you, Daryl. So you want to put the information that we had in confidentiality so that the public can see what we had um, to make our decisions off of. Yeah. And, yet, and yes, um, Mr. Mayor, if I may address that, uh, the, the yeah. from Commissioner uh, Commissioner Collins and Commissioner Borland, uh, yes, the both the RF request for proposals itself and the proposals would be considered a matter of, matter of public record. They've been, they've been opened um, and that would be, that would be a matter of public record. So we'll find well, I, I wasn't under the impression it was closed anyhow because hard time managers open knowledge for everybody. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. I still don't know what Commissioner Collins is referring to, and I would love to know. Uh, I just wanted to be in the, in, in the, attached to the minutes of this meeting so that everybody can see it. Well, for the record, if you want me to, now I will do this, and I think I'm allowed to do it. I do know Jeff Maloney. I do know Ben Gallup. And I think if you're in, if you're impugning Maloney's character, I would take the issue with it because I would suggest you look at his total record. I'm not taking it, anybody. It's, a, it's a lot more honorable than some people I know, Daryl. I'm just trying to do what's best for the town man. Yeah. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you for that. You always have. On every single issue, Daryl, you've been so selfish and jealous, it's unbelievable. And the, the record speaks for itself. I'm going to... Uh, I'm you're, gonna you're, my, you're not, you're not the cleanest, but you're not the cleanest person in town, you know. Yeah, you're not either, Mr. Mayor. I don't claim to be. I know my past, and I admit I all of it. I don't well, claim to be either. Well... All right, let's move on. We have uh, the the name of Jeff Maloney and the name of Ben Gallup offered for the nomination of uh, attorney. We'll take uh, Ben Gallup first. All in favor of Ben Gallup, say aye. Or record it. Are we going to have a discussion on it? Yeah, discussion. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you all off. I didn't mean to. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. It's uh, with the uh, the audio clicked a little bit, um, and uh, Commissioner Borland had had engaged here. I believe he. I'm sorry. Go ahead, uh, Jason. I did. I, I did want to speak on both these guys, and I didn't. You know, I mean, I this has gone on a while, and I think all of us have put a lot of thought into it. As I was reading through that, uh, their RFPs for I think the third time last night, I found myself reading through Ben's first, thinking. This is great. He'd, he'd be fantastic. Make my notes, put that aside, and I pick up Jeff's. And I think, man, this is great. He'd be fantastic. Um, and that's what we said. Both these guys are going to put us in um, a, a, a great position. Uh, I, I, I didn't question integrity of, of, of either guy, for sure. Um, but, you know, I... I I found that Ben had himself a, a, an unfair advantage here because he's already doing work for us and he's had the opportunity to get in front of us and, and impress me. Um, and so that's, that's is what it is, but it's, a uh, um, you know, I think if Jeff had the opportunity to be in front of us, he probably would have impressed too. Um, but as luck would have it, Ben did. Uh, and so I think there's, for me, I can't justify essentially firing Ben and asking him to step aside uh, and so, yeah, that, that, that's my comment on the, on the two of them. My further, I wanted to make public my thought process on, on the two guys. But again, I think both of them, I'd be excited to have a uh, part of this team for sure. All right. Anybody else? I have a thought. Um, I think both attorneys are very well qualified. And I, I, I will speak to, I think it's unfair. Um, to use this as an opportunity to grandstand and try to muddy the waters to make anybody uh, feel like whoever their choice was prior to the day that was in any way uh, the waters were muddied. Um, I think it's an unfair opportunity to use that as an opportunity to grandstand the people to, uh, to try to push a agenda. Um, and I'll leave it at that. To, to piggyback off that, I do want to make clear, I did, I did not take uh, the mayor or Jeff's integrity relationship into account. I personally don't, don't think there's a conflict of interest there. Um, yeah, but I, I think I can stand uh, by my, my, my change with, it, with integrity for sure. Well, let me say this, with all candor and all seriousness, I made up my mind this afternoon, and I know Ben, I can work with him just as good as I can work with Jeff. I, I, I prefer Jeff, naturally, I don't deny it, but I can promise you this, I will work just as closely with Ben Gallup as I would have Jeff Malarney, because my first love is Manny O and doing the right thing without grandstanding. Anyone else?
All right, we have before us uh, Ben Gallup and Jeff Maloney. All for Ben Gallup, say aye. Or you take the recording, Mr. Manager. Yes, yes sir. Um, if um, the first nomination, the first nomination that was made was Jeff Malarney. Jeff Malarney. So I believe I'm obliged to go in the order in which the nomination. All right, that's was made. fine. So um, I, I'll go ahead and do the roll call, Mr. Mayor, if that's all right. Yeah. All right, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Burke. Nay, for Jeff Maloney. That's correct. I, yes, uh, to clarify for the public listening, this is on the nomination of, of Mr. Jeff Malarney. Uh, um, sorry, I'm making making sure I've got I've got notes. Um, Commissioner uh, Commissioner Mann. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Borland. Nay. Commissioner Walker. Nay. Commissioner Collins. Nay. Okay. Um, Record the vote, Mr. Manager. Yes, sir. The vote is four to two uh, uh, against the nomination of Mr. Jeff Malarney as town attorney. Okay. All right. All in favor of uh, Ben Gallup. Yes, sir. I'll do the I'll do the same thing again. I'll go I'll go around the, the tape around the room. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby on the nomination of Mr. Van Gallup. May. Uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Burke on the nomination of Van Gallup. Uh, Commissioner Mann on the nomination of Van Gallup. Nay. Commissioner Borland on the nomination of Van Gallup. Aye. Commissioner Walker on the nomination of Van Gallup. And Commissioner Collins on the nomination of Ben Gallup. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we uh, the the right. final final vote is four to two in favor of uh, the nomination all of right. Mr. Gallup. We we seem to have a new town attorney who is Ben Gallup, and uh, you'll notify him, uh, Mr. Manager, and take care of all the procedures that you have to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who would this going to affect? Um, okay, so, uh, oh, uh, Mr. Mayor, there's, sorry, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a question. Uh, uh, there's a question from Commissioner Burke about when this would go into effect. So, from a um, from a contractual standpoint, right now, the only agreement that the town has with Mr. Ben Gallup is for a scope of services related to planning and zoning matters uh, with a particular seg uh, segment of town. Uh, so that letter agreement would have to be modified and and brought back to the board before you know ratification but i'm happy to do that as well as transition any other files that may be handled by other council uh, that is you know that also has has a letter agreement with the town and we'll uh, we'll go ahead and close <coughs> transition those cases in consultation with the attorney selected by the board so and within the next couple of days but we still have to use uh Wyatt. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. That, okay, because I think Melissa said she had used Wyatt recently. Yes. On, on some issues. That's, that's, okay. That is okay. correct. Okay. And there, we didn't have them. We, we, out there. The town still has letter agreements in force with the, both both of those attorneys for you know different segments okay. of its business. So we're not left without counsel, but okay. we understand the will Perfect. of the board is to move forward with uh, Mr. Van Gallup as town attorney, and we'll make sure to settle those files uh, in an appropriate manner. Thank you, Jake. So why it you will be in pain? Yeah, uh, 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 to answer a Mayor Pro Tem Selby's question, there were some files being closed out by Mr. Wyatt Booth under his current letter agreement, and we'll go ahead and, and expeditiously handle the, 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 closure, the transfer or closure of uh, all appropriate files. So we're paying two attorneys right now. Um, yeah, uh, um, um, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, we're, we, we have agreements with two attorneys, but we're not double paying because they're working on different issues. Right. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Collins, uh, can we uh, get out a letter of appreciation to Wyatt for his services to the town of Manningham, uh, some kind of letter to uh, recognize his longevity in uh, town of Manningham as a town attorney and for the mayor's signature? Yes. I I don't see why not. Christine. I mean he's he served us 
as long as other people. <laughs> How long has it took to town to meet you? At least 10, 12 years, Paul. At least 12. Yeah. All right, we don't have no problem in sending a letter of appreciation to work he's done in the past. I don't have any problem signing that, James. Okay, and and presumably it, that uh, something like that wouldn't require a motion of the board if I'm if I'm categorizing it like uh, that's what the I'm mayor, mayor typically signs like proclamations and things like that. So if the board has consensus that a letter can be drafted as appropriate, I'm happy I'm happy to assist in that if the board would like. This is Eddie Mann. I'll move to authorize a time manager to negotiate and sign a written contract for legal services with Ben Gallagher. Oh. A letter. Uh, um, Mr. Yeah. Mayor, that was a motion from Commissioner Mann uh, authorizing, uh, mm -hmm. authorizing a town manager to do handle the contractual arrangements for the new town attorney. Yeah, good. Is there a second? Second. And that was from right. Commissioner Borland, Mr. Mayor. All right. Uh, there's a motion to second that we accept and expedite uh, the process of hiring Ben Gallup as a town attorney. All in favor? Go ahead and poll, James. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby? <laughs> What, what, what was that again? Oh, um, uh, uh, for and for the public listening, this is an authorization for the town manager to negotiate and sign a written contract for legal services with the new town attorney so that uh, in, in accordance with the will of the board that we go ahead and get a letter agreement so we actually have something in writing with the new town attorney with his new scope of work as a town attorney. For the town of Fort Ben Gallup. Aye. Aye. Uh, thank you, Mayor Potem. Uh, Commissioner Burke? Aye. Commissioner Mann? Aye. Commissioner Borland? Aye. Commissioner Walker? Aye. Commissioner Collins? Aye. Okay. Uh, All Mr. Right. Mayor? Yeah. Go ahead. Go yes, ahead. sir. It looks like there's a unanimous vote on that motion, and I believe that would take us to the agenda, uh, to the nine, agenda item 9E, if it's all right with you, sir. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, we, have, we, have, we have before the board, um, a, this is the flood damage prevention ordinance and flood maps that it has heard about previously from the town planner. Uh, also, uh, has gone to planning and zoning, but we have our town planner, Melissa Dickerson, who will be giving a short staff report and giving you an update on the, the latest, the impact of the, of the new law on your deliberations. Uh, uh, town planner Dickerson, are you with us? Yes, I am, town manager Ayers. Um, and thank you, Mr. Mayor and commissioners. Um, for what seems um, to be maybe the, the 24th opportunity that I've had to um, talk to you all about these, um, the, the new flood maps and the flood damage prevention ordinance. Um, I, I shared with um, folks a, around the lunch table today, socially distanced, that um, I was coming to work today and I was really excited that we were gonna be able to um, go ahead and move forward with these if you all, um, if, if you all felt prepared and ready to move forward. Um, and then we received some information from the School of Government regarding the new law that was signed in, um, the new bill that was signed into law by the governor on Monday. So um, my recommendation to you all is that you add this um, topic to your mid-month meeting for action, um, because due to session law 2020-3 being signed into law by the governor on Monday, May 3rd, and the requirement in the law that uh, that re requires an additional 24 hours to allow for written public comment after public hearings. So while you all had your public hearing on this matter earlier tonight, the new law requires that we that we um, be available to receive written comments for the next 24 hours. Um, so. That means that, that we need to um, move this to your mid-month agenda for action. Um, and I, I hope you would consider um, doing so. That is the update from me. Thank you, Tom Planner, Planner Dickerson. Um, and, and Mr. Mayor, if I may, this is, this is what I'm referred to as late breaking news. The governor signs a law on, on Monday. The school government at 610 last night sends us an update indicating this is buried in here. But it's intended to help the public in that with electronic meetings these days in the current crisis, some folks may not have you know, may not have had an opportunity to attend a public hearing or their phone line or whatever it might be. Um, so that's why they added this extra requirement that 
for 24 hours after the public hearing that written comments may come in. So in accordance with that law, I'd like to inform members of the public that you, uh, you have an additional 24 hours from this meeting to submit your written comments. They should go to the town planner at mdickerson at manionc.gov. So that allows, again, more transparency there and that there's no motion required of the board tonight uh, as this item would now be, uh, this item would come up for a vote at your next board meeting. Okay. All right, next item. Yes, sir. Um, item number 10 is mayor and commissioner's comments. Yeah, I don't have any comments, except I'd really truly like to apologize, apologize again to the board for my lack of knowledge in teleconferencing. This has been complicated and hard. But we got through it, and so uh, that's all I got to offer. So somebody jump in. I don't know the order of seating and arrangement, but I'll try to remember it. Betty, go ahead. Um, first, I want to say that the July 4th event that we canceled, I want everybody in the town of Manny and, and the county to know that that was a hard decision, like you said, my manager. <clears throat> it's a hard decision, but it's a decision um, for protection and safety. Uh, and we enjoy those events just like everybody else. It, it, it's rough making that. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mayor, next up would be Commissioner Burke. Okay. Uh, oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm looking at my saying arrangement in my head how it normally is, but you, <laughs> you tell me who's that. Uh, Go ahead, uh, Richie. Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Y yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Um, um, Next up would be a uh, commissioner man. Um, uh, for our town commons, I know we have a discussion on next week, but I think um, it would be nice if we could have a community, uh, whatever you wanna call it, community action group, community committee. Um, because the community has been so involved in this town commons process, to maybe have a small group of um, community citizens to be involved with the process going forward. Um, with the town commons to help facilitate some things, uh, work with you, work with the engineer contractors to, to involve the town um, people in that entire process, being that they've been so involved prior to now to keep that momentum going. Um, the second thing I have is uh, I love small town government because we all get to help each other. I think every one of us at, the, at our core want to help our neighbors. I think now more than ever, we should remember that um, even though we may disagree on issues, we shouldn't attack or discredit anybody, but we should use it as a way to help each other and understand each other instead of um, using things to bring each other down or tear each other apart. We should try to, to uh, figure out a way to, to mend people together. And I hope going forward, we will continue to do that. That's okay. okay. James? Yes, sir. Next up would be Commissioner Borland. Yeah, I, to follow on, uh, Eddie, I, I think the way that the Town Common project came about um, through the community and the, how involved and uh, invested everybody is, I think it, it makes complete sense to have a, I don't exactly know what that looks like, but a small working group to, the last thing we want to do is this, slow this down. I think something that you talked about was the schedule that you know, kind of perked ears up uh, and that's, you know, <laughs> moving pretty quick and that's a good thing. Um, but to keep people involved and, and you know, kind of whatever it's a working group, steering committee, I don't know, um, but to, to keep them involved and help, help steering things right. Um, and then, you know, I mean, it, it's true. It, with everything going on and social media and opening the bridges, this has been a, an ugly time. And I want to make sure that we're being respectful of each other and setting a good example for, um, for everyone else. You know, who are we here to uh, sit and, and judge everyone, you know, out there attacking each other for the difference of opinions? Um, we're up here to talk about our different opinions and it's okay. Um, you know, it, it's okay to disagree respectfully. And, um, you know, I, I hope, I hope we don't agree a hundred percent on everything. Otherwise we're not going to get anywhere productive. So that's, that's again, I'll say for that. 
to the four people who uh, who are still on the line. Appreciate you hanging in with us. Uh, it's, the it, is Melissa. It's uh, okay. <laughs> so it's a long meeting and it's frustrating, like the mayor said. So we'll we'll hopefully get back to normal at some point. Yes, right, sir. Uh, next up is uh, Commissioner Walker. Um, I I really didn't have much. I just again want to thank you know James and everybody and and uh, Mayor. You you've done well over the phone. You're you're getting used to this. Um, it was a long agenda and and we got through it. Um, I did just want to say you know I hope everybody has still completed their census because it's very important that we do that even though we're not having you know people at our door um you know and, and and so forth but um would like to remind everybody just to please um complete their census it did not take long at all online um but it's very important that you know we know um what we have here in manio and um and we can safeguard you know our small town and uh, just thank you know the town staff for the continuity <coughs> services that we're used to and you would never know anything you know going on with the pandemic pandemic because um you know everything's just kind of continuing like it does so thank y'all and uh mr mayor the next next up and um, um next up would be commissioner collins all right Dale. uh if i step on some people's toes um please accept my apology uh, I uh, I respect everybody on this board and for what everybody brings to the table. Uh, James and I talked about uh, somehow recognizing uh, the employees who worked through this pandemic. Uh, I don't know how we could recognize them, maybe monetarily, or but I want us to uh, think about how we can reckon because they never, they didn't miss a beat. Uh, the town ran smoothly through all this uh, mayhem, and so uh, if everybody on the board can uh, maybe talk some ideas of how to recognize the dedication of our employees and how they made the town a better place to this uh, tragedy, that's all I got. All right, James. Yes, sir. That uh, that that is the um, seven members, mayor, and board of commissioners for that item number ten. So next one would be item eleven would be. Adjourn to this recess, and we, I'd make a comment. Recess. We recess, don't we? Yes, sir. When, when is the work? What date is the workshop? Yes, sir. The, the, bu the budget retreat would be at eight thirty on April fourteenth. So we would okay. uh, board would recess to that the eight thirty. All right. We'll 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 declare a recess until yeah. when? I'm sorry, oh, May fourteenth. I thought you. it said I thought you said May the fourteenth. Thank you, Mister. It was May. I accidentally said April, and my and. Uh, um, but the commissioners here have, have corrected me, and I appreciate that very much. So the, the recess to the budget retreat would be 8:30 on May 14th, um, and uh, I guess a, mo a motion would be uh, would be necessary. Yeah. Okay. Where is that going to be at, James? A, t a town. Okay. Yes, uh, yes, Commissioner Collins. That would be at, at town hall with social distancing in place. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, and uh, Commissioner, uh, the confirmed Commissioner Man is at 8:30 a.m. Okay, we will de now we'll declare a recess May the 14th, 8.30, we've got to have a motion. So moved. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Commissioner Mann has, has made the motion. I'll second. And, com and Commissioner Walker has second. Is All right, right. We've, go ahead and pull, we've, sir. We've got a motion and a second that we recess till May the 14th at 8.30 at Town Hall. All yes, in favor? Sir. Oh, go yes, ahead. And po you got po poll, James. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Mann. Aye. Commissioner Borland. Aye. Commissioner Walker. Aye. And Commissioner Collins. Aye. Mr. Mayor, you have a unanimous vote All to right. recess. All right. We stand recess till May the 14th at 830. Y'all, everybody be safe and be happy. Thank you. Thank you. you.